I'll send you the list of all of the, like, all right, all the We're sources, good. and then, mm. and then you can just be like, not that one. This one's okay. Fuck this. Yep. That kind of thing. Hey. What's up? Uh, wait. Hold on. Holding. Hold on. Oh, I need to. I need to see. Oh, okay. This. I have a uh, question for people. Never mind. Yeah. What? What's up? Yeah. Is anyone vehemently opposed to me keeping a uh, body count? A body count? Like, like of deaths? Or... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or partners. You know, I'm here. Of, like, people that we kill? Like, what yeah. kind of body count? I mean... People I that we kill. I know that, okay. that, could be, that could be multiple. If you want, I could keep two, I guess. <laughs> Are you planning on seducing <laughs> clowns? <laughs> look, look, Who man did end happened? up seducing Sophie in the one shots. That is true. I did. I challenge to create domestic bliss. So, um, <laughs> I have been. I have been uh, challenged. Just so you know, to... I'm not opposed to either. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's probably something I, I should have like covered in the uh, the session zero, but like relationship stuff. Are you know my players, fucking answer to this. The, right. Are players comfortable with relationship stuff? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little iffy, just because I'm just a severely awkward person in general. Yeah. Which might come off real fine, actually. I don't know. No, no that's fine. I am also okay with that. Uh, sure, sorry, I, I've been really quiet because I've been, like, panic putting my character together. Okay, yeah. Good. <laughs> Fox messaged so me just teaching. after getting into the call, being like, uh, Fog doesn't have a class, so I guess all they have is their claws. Ah! It's just I level zero. What? It's okay. What, so is, what is Fog exactly? I took the monk class uh, Because if you go and look on D&D Beyond on the Path of the Barbarian, uh, oh, uh, Path of the oh, Beast shit. Barbarian subclass, it gives you um, body transforming forming things when you rage, like you can get claws or a bite attack or a tail. Fog already has claws. Yeah, I don't so know if that helps you in any way. Um, Fog, we can absolutely allow you to do a rewrite. Um, also, because it can be a little, little shitty to get into a character three sessions in and then find out that the build that you are doing just isn't fun. Uh, I do allow rewrites up until the third session, if you don't count the session zero. So essentially, this one and then two more after that, you're able to rewrite, and then after that, you're playing that character. Sounds good to me. I'll probably try and do it more early on, just so we don't wait until that late in the game. Yep. Because uh, I personally just would prefer to do that because it kind of feels like cheating at that point. But mm. yeah, th that's a personal thing for me. Yeah. Also, I've always just feel like Fog was never defined by the class. I literally can't remember what class Fog was originally. Monk before. Oh, okay. re oh yeah. really? <laughs> Big punchy wolf yeah. man. Wolfman. Mm -hmm. Harold Monks Wolfman. Are pretty, monks are pretty badass as far as, like, physical. I remember the bag. Yeah. The bag. Monk Rudenite would work. Ugh. <sighs> Are we? Are is everybody ready? Or are we still doing stuff? I mean, uh, I'm good. I think yeah, I'm no, I'm ready. I'm gonna be. I, Jaskin, I did send you the link to Fog's character sheet for D and D Beyond. If you want to take a quick once over at it. Yeah, I'll take a very quick peek. Cool, 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 cool. While Jim gives his thing. A cool, cool, cool. Okay. Uh, what's up, everybody? My name is Dokuro Jim, and uh, today, uh, Blackhawk Gaming Twitch. Thank you for the follow. I'm probably gonna turn that off. Actually, I meant to. Um, but, uh, today, we're streaming D&D. I'm with a bunch of friends, I've been wanting to do this for forever, and really, this is, uh, Jask, who is one of my mods, Dittery. This is, one, this is his campaign, so, like, I'm gonna pass it off to him here in a second, but I just wanted to say to all of you lovely people who continue to watch me, welcome to the Gim Gam, and thank you for everything that this stream is going to provide. I appreciate. Um... If you guys want to check out the campaign session we're playing, it's called Hecna. It's a weird interdimensional spooky carnival thing. Um, the link in the top left-hand corner of the stream is my buddy, uh, 
Diddery's uh, affiliate link for Hit Point Press. So if y'all want to get anything uh, as this is going on or after or whatever, uh, use that link and he gets a little bit of juice uh, as you do. So uh, I'm going to uh, pass it over to you, uh, Jask, and uh, then you do your thing. So there you go. Okay. So first off, I do want to address. I'm not a, a mod on your your stream. Remember? No, you are. We had we had no. We remember we had the issues. Well, you are in my heart. Okay. <laughs> All right. It wouldn't let you see. I just well, typed there. No, I'm VIP. You, yeah, you can't be VIP and mod. And in my heart, you are mod. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no. Um. I'm Jask or Didari, not Diddery. I always I forget. <laughs> I always forget. I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. It's okay. Anybody who like reads it, reads it as Diddery uh, or some weird variant of, never Didari. Um, yeah, and this is Hecna. Uh, I don't believe that it's out for purchase yet. Uh, I have it, oh, because, it of, uh, because of backing it. Um, but it might be. I could double check that later. Um I absolutely love this setting. I've read through most of the stuff for it, um, and it's it's an amazing setting. It does a really good job of setting up a very spooky world while still being inclusive and uh, fun. Uh, it's really hard to balance comedy and scary times, and they've I feel like they've done a pretty good job of it. Yeah, so um, I turned off all the alerts just so they don't bing bong while we're doing stuff, but it'll still yeah. pop up, and I'll, I'll do them during breaks if we get anything. Okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so real quickly, I would like to uh, have everybody introduce themselves as well, uh, just so that everybody knows who's talking when they're talking, except for the people who are late. They get to suffer. Um, oh, no. Okay. So, Calamity, you're at the top of the list. Oh, shit. Shit. Okay. Um, hello, I'm Beep. But I'm also, hi, I'm Calamity. I'm your wonderful, favorite, bestest, um... Companion! Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> Around these parts. If you ever need anything, let me know! God, I love Calamity so much. I'm upset already. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, she would fit in so well in, like, the Hasbin Hotel universe. Oh, absolutely. For um, sure. But... <laughs> but yeah, so after that, we'll have Eugene. Hello, everyone. My name, of course, is Dokoro Jim. And uh, I'm playing Eugene, the paladin who is not a paladin. Uh, he is the best boy. And uh, he's going to protect all of you, so help him, Pelor. Mm -hmm. And you'll get to hear his voice in a second. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm saving it. I'm going to save it like a Werther's in the, <laughs> in the back of my cheek. And then eventually, you'll, just, you'll hear it and you'll be like, God, how does he not that have won't. 70 bitches? <laughs> that exactly. little sticky candy at the bottom of the bag. Hmm. I'm going All right, to I'm fight done. You, Jim. Are you going to fight me? Mm -hmm. You don't fight me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Who next? Uh, I just all tabbed out. Uh, Gideon. I'm Paul. I'll be playing Gideon. Um, I'm really excited about this campaign. It sounds like it's going to be so much fun. The one shot was a great time. And all of you seem like you're going to be amazing to play with. That's uh, about all I got. Gideon wants to die. That's his only goal in this is either to die <laughs> or overthrow the Raven Queen. There's Maybe only two win. options. Cool. So, Great. if you see him like he's trying to die, well, he is. I don't want him to die, though, because I like this character a lot. But if he does, he does. It's always fun playing like that. I, I'm in quite a few RPs where uh, I play characters who just don't care if they die and throw themselves at danger. But I really like playing them. Yeah, it just makes it interesting. And then if yeah. one chance he dies, then I'm like, oh shit, I have to go into my library and pull out a new character. Yep. Uh, not gonna lie, Jim, the thing just came up, came up to... Uh, cash in for sing mode and i was real tempted to get a singing eugene oh my god i can't do that Shh, don't make me sing <laughs> and do the eugene voice jesus christ i think uh, we can all contest can we pretend like, like airplanes in the night sky like shooting stars <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all you it. get that's all you get 
That's, um, that's actually genuinely difficult. So that's all you get. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, Please practice next we that. have Mayworth. <laughs> Um, so hi everyone, uh, my name's Lindsay. I will be playing uh, Mayworth today, or May. Um, she is... I'll be right um, back. <laughs> okay. Uh, she is a very sweet, um, very naive um, golden retriever of a girl. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and I'm very excited for this. I, I will say Mayworth was my favorite hands-down character to run the one-shots for out of all the one-shots I ran. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it, she really does fit this setting like a little too well. I feel like I'm going to have a hard time playing her um, anywhere else <laughs> after this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, she she just she really allowed the setting to yes and and she yes and <laughs> off of the all setting right. itself. Just mm -hmm. perfect for the setting. Yeah. Um, Olive, you're next. Uh, hi, I'm Riley. I'm playing Olive, who is just a very tall, weird deer satyr thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and Walks Through Fog. Hello, hello, hello. I am Fox. I will be playing Walks Through Fog, who is just an amalgamation of a skull-headed creature. Mm -hmm. uh, he is he is good boy. He is good boy. Uh, he's very, very animalistic in a lot of his tendencies, so he tends to be very quiet, but when he does speak, it's kind of weird to listen to him. Yeah. Um, Fog's another one of the characters that I really enjoy uh, from previous, previous experiences. Uh, I love Fog so much. Just because I really like the um the like juxtaposition of big spooky monster that you expect to be mauling people and then has like shy anime girl energy. Like I can see Fog doing the touching fingertips thing. Oh my god, straight up. Yeah. Mm. Oh my gosh. I just imagine him like it would actually probably not even be like even one fingertip because he wouldn't associate that at first. But he'd probably just be like all of his fingertips normal. <laughs> Yeah. Shy about it. Yep. I'm actually gonna turn you up a little bit more, Fox, because you're you're kind of you're kind of quiet. Mm. Let me just. We'll do 135 percent. There we go. Okay. And uh, viewers at home, uh, if you guys have any problem with the audio. Uh, just let me know, but don't be badgers about it. Just be like, hey, Jim, the audio's off. And I'll be like, all right, I'll fix it. But don't and be then like, he's going to shit all of our pants. Yes, yeah, but then don't be, just, <laughs> don't be just like, shit, motherfucker, ass. Your fucking stream sounds like dog water. I hate you. If you do that, I won't change it. You have to suffer. <laughs> How does dog water exactly sound? Well, Terrible. you know, you know, when a dog, like when, when they, when they drink out of the big, Oh, okay, like, like, like them like, lapping it slurp, up. Slurp, 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 you know, you know that shit? Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. now I know what you're talking about. Yeah. This is us as a group. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, Ryan Games 420, thank you for the follow. Beep, thank you for hosting us with one whole viewer. Yeah, well, wait, there's actually somebody fucking there, what? Yeah, there is. Hello, I love you, whoever that is. Hello, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I have a good host on mine too. Oh shit! Triple host. Oh! Can I stop yeah. watching this while I play? Yes, you can be. That's just what I'm doing. It. Just mute yeah, it. I so have it up. Have... So same. So yep, there's that. Up, oh wow! One viewer. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. forget how to host. Well, well, don't. Well, don't mute it. Just mute the tab. Like if you're using Chrome, yeah. mute the tab. Because otherwise, we don't get the viewer. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately. All right, this let, me, is interesting. let me pull up Eugene's sheet, and then I'll be good to go. Oh, he's right here. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Yeet. You're welcome. I forgot Yeet. how to do this. I don't what twitch if, very often. What if... <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. Um, would, <laughs> would all of you be okay if I made Calamity's voice suddenly just the uwu accent? 
No. God, I would be okay with that. <laughs> I, I would be alright. No. I have no problem with that. B. I don't know what you're talking about, so go for it. Whoa, yeah. what he he hello, did. Mr. Gideon. Hello. My name is Eugene. <laughs> I sound oh. like this now. Hello, what can I help you with? Just another thing to piss off Gideon. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I feel like it's more... Absolutely go like... for it. Gideon is going to have the worst couple of days. Oh yeah, he already wants to shoot himself. <laughs> Gideon's no good. Very bad month. <laughs> <laughs> like it's more like his Just existence a month at this point. Fucking week. No. Uh, oh. no, I'm not strong enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it for my next if 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 Calamity dies, I Bring will do the Uwu voice. Remember your kobold with the Uwu voice? Oh no, I do. Yeah. What? This is uh <laughs> I'm, not, ah! I'm not strong enough. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. Um, I was so, gonna say, are we ready? Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Uh, a bit of a slow roll to start, but yes. It's fine, man. The Unexpectables um, has like 30 minute before time, <laughs> so we're good. We're only 16 minutes, 30 seconds in. We're Gucci, homie. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's also like I get to talk to some of you only, you know, once every other week. It's yeah, nice yeah. to hang out a little bit. It is. Um, Absolutely. So. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Where we left off during the session zero, uh, most of you had been chased by a bear. Um, one, it, technically two of you decided to stand off against the bear. Second person disappeared into the circus. No idea where he went. Probably to go fight a bear. Um, and uh, one of you had greeted the rest of the group that had been chased by a bear, being Calamity, greeting uh, everyone but Olive. And Olive happened to already be in the circus, heard a bit of a commotion, and came around the corner to see what was going on. And that is where we stopped. Uh, so, uh, picking back up from exactly that scene, Olive, you've come around the corner to see a large group of pretty worn out looking people. They'd been really hauling ass to like get away from this massive bear you can still actually see a, a, a small distance past them a very large dire bear literally as previously described it's a bear the size of a bus <laughs> um <laughs> with spikes coming off of it. it it's got like froth coming out of its mouth it is slamming against a invisible barrier um not bear ear and is unable to get through uh, eventually, it just kind of growls, and you can see the resignation in its eyes um, as it just turns around and huffs off. Like, into the circus? No, it, back away from the circus, so into the woods. Okay. Couldn't get into the circus. Have I seen these things before, or am I just like, is this the first time seeing one? Um, you've seen dire creatures before. You recognize that that is a dire strain. Um, especially right. in the Feywild, you've seen, like, a dire wolf or so. That's true. Okay. If I remember correctly, uh, most of my 2B party is, uh, scattered on the ground, I think. I believe yeah. you are correct. I believe the, the, the vast majority of them are currently prone yeah, on I the think ground. There was, like, there was, like, a, a spider web or something. I don't remember. Yeah, like, Eugene my brain was, was. was bounced off of a spider yeah. web. Eugene yeah, and Eugene May. And May. Yep. Yeah. May okay. was being carried by Eugene. <laughs> um. Well, first, I'm going to retune my loot because, in my surprise, I messed it up a little bit. So I'm going to tune that a little, and I'm just going to walk up to everybody and just kind of stare at them awkwardly. Yeah. Oh, hello! Are you with this incoming party? Uh, no. Oh, all right, all right. Have you been given a formal introduction to the Revelia yet? I have. <gasps> oh, well, I hope you do enjoy I'll whip out your my, travels. like, I'll whip out, like, my little tickets and be like, Yeah, I got these. <gasps> oh. haven't used them yet. Well, all sorts of things you can use them on, so don't be a stranger to, yeah? <laughs> She's just smiling at her, like, I don't know what this is, but I'm happy. 
Yeah, uh, uh, Olive, you've been here for a little bit. You recognize <laughs> a reveler, and yes. Calamity is definitely a reveler. I've learned to just smile at them because they scare smile. me. <laughs> how how do we get out of here, clown? Oh, wait, what do you want? I want to know how to get out of here. <laughs> oh, do you? Well, perhaps maybe we could go search to find somebody who knows the answer. Unfortunately, I don't know that answer. Why would I want to? I guess yeah, the only Liam, issue you have leave? is to we lead us to the to. person, then we have to go. <laughs> uh, Eugene stands up and, like, straightens his armor and just, like, looks off at where the dire bear went and, like, shakes his fist. He's like, yeah, you better run! <laughs> you piece of garbage! It whips around and starts slamming against the barrier again. <laughs> oh, you want to invite your friend in? No, no, not friend. Oh, not please. Friend. Okay. Please do. Mr. Gideon, no. I don't think I have any spare admission tickets. Yeah, Sorry. I don't think you want to fight those anyway. They're kind of nasty. That's the point. He, he sheathes his just sword. Kind of sitting in the back, just looking around at everything. <laughs> And there's plenty to look around at. This place is just it's colors everywhere. Movement. You see people holding things you've never seen before. Uh, you see lights uh, strung up through strings that don't appear to be using any sort of fire. They just kind of flicker with a yellow white kind of light. Um, and you see a massive tent. Like, this could be possibly like a, a capital building um with a ferris wheel not far from it may is like tearing up a little bit just from sheer excitement um she turns to gideon and eugene and is like i told you this was going to be such a good time you should have trusted me i know we're going to have fun yeah so eugene... only the naive <laughs> see red flags as a carnival so so eugene is straightening like his, his stuff because it's like all out of whack and he like redoes the buckle on one of his uh, gauntlets and he's just like listen I already had the bad feeling and I still have the bad feeling okay no what what was it about not being able to leave and he turns to calamity because because please tell me you didn't say that oh no 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 why would I ever say that um, her wings sort of twitch uncomfortably in their bound position. Um, Eugene squints. May I roll inside on Calamity, please? <laughs> may, may, may I, Jess? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Uh, passive. That, that's, a, that's a big old 12. A 12. So my passive... Deception is a 15. Uh. So, um, take that as you will. It's so, really, at the end of the day, it's up to you whether so you want to suss it or not. Eugene squints and then, like, realizes that this is a, a lady that he is speaking to. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, uh, I mean, you know, uh, I sure hope we can leave. I mean, after, you know, Oh, after well, yes. I just mean that I don't know how. I mean... <laughs> After I the... work here. Why would I ever need to leave, right? Can we not just go out, like, out of the gate? Well, no, because if you just walked out of the gate, the barrier wouldn't be up. And then that big scary bear would come back, right? Well, but what if we, like, wait until it goes away and then oh. we leave? My dear, well... you are far scarier than that bear will ever be. I don't know, Gideon. <laughs> she seems all right. I mean, this... that's, that's a perspective. No, that's a person, Giddy. Gosh. Well, if you why like, would we I ever want to leave, Eugene? Mask. Eugene, come on. Why would we ever want to leave? Look, well, there are games. Let, there's some kind of weird glowing may, stuff. May, okay, can I? May, may, may I? May I? May? Please? May? What? May I speak? I can speak, yeah. No, no, <laughs> no, may I, Eugene, speak to you for like two seconds? Sure. Okay. Spit it, Junior. So, Ned, look, listen. 
I have things to do that aren't this. And frankly, if I don't get back to the order in like at least, he looks at his wrist, like four days, they're going to wonder what happened to me. And then then all the paladins are going to come looking for me and it's going to be weird because I'm going to have to explain where I was and they're not going to believe me because they never believe me. And May is gone. She's yeah. walked away. Og has looked at his wrist when Eugene does it. <laughs> I've uh, I've been like distracted by Calamity's costume, and I'm interested in like how to design oh. one for myself. Yeah, Would you... you like one of these masks? <laughs> it can be a fun little souvenir. <laughs> Where do I get one? Oh, I actually have spare costumes. Hold on, and she'll sort of um, hammer space. I don't know what her bag looks like. I don't want to think about it. Don't make me think about it. <laughs> um. She'll grab one of her costumes, and I think it's going to be the straight-up, um, like, proper clown one and not the gymnast one. And she will grab the um, lower half of that mask, um, because it seems like they're both- all of her masks, at least the two that you have seen now, seem to actually be full masks that have, like, half parts you can take off on the top. Um, and she will hand the bottom half of the mask to her. There you go! Feel free to put it on, yeah? May. I highly suggest Please, <laughs> please don't do that until we know where we are. Um, oh. Taking Gideon's suggestion, I will roll insight on that. <laughs> okay. While you're rolling insight, I'm going to address something really quick. Calamity, mm -hmm. you're a warlock of Hecna. You have mm -hmm. hammer space. It doesn't, <gasps> it doesn't affect your carry yes. weight. You still have to obey carry weight. You still have to obey what would, like, make sense for your character to, like, be able to carry in their pockets. Or on their person if they had, like, a bag. But we're oh, going to say... Oh, thank God. You have hammer space, so you don't need to draw a backpack on your character to have things. Thank Man, you. Man, I want to be a warlock of Hecna so bad. It sounds so cool. It's fun. I love that they change I can't the warlock it. spell. <laughs> um... May rolled a 20, a dirty 20. But hey, 20. um, with a pa okay, so her persuasion is a passive 15. Doesn't seem like she's lying to you, um, but it does seem like she's definitely trying to convince you to get this put on your face. Okay, yeah, um, um, I will say also with that because you're, yeah. you you did get such a good insight, there's no malicious intent, right? Yeah. That's a fair point. Okay. I that. And I, so I was actually rolling insight into looking at the mask. Was that being oh. Um, the mask tells no lies. It is a mask. Uh, but as far as you can tell, it's, it's safe. Okay. I put it on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You, you turn into a clown instantly. Okay. <laughs> so, so Eugene you is still ranting in the background. clown nose. Yeah, yeah, Eugene ranting in the background. Yeah, Eugene's still ranting in the background. He stops and like looks at her and just does the hand drag down the face and he's just like, oh no. Oh man. I the like mask, turn way, around. I like turn a... around with the mask on to Eugene and I'm like pointing at it like, see, so much fun. Big clown uh. smile on it. Big red <laughs> nose where the nose would be. Upset. <laughs> uh, viciously, viciously upset. <laughs> Just like, Olive is standing by, and she's gonna start druid crafting a little flower. Fog's gonna and... walk up behind Eugene and lick his ear. <laughs> like, I like it, that. It means okay. comfort. Yeah, I Eugene, love Eugene because... jumps three feet in the air, just like, <laughs> not actually, but he just turns around. And he's like, wary, looking warily, like, "Hey, big fella, uh, you said you saved uh, that guy. I don't know where he went, but." He's somewhere. Thanks for that. Don't worry about it. Fog shrugs. I'm gonna worry about it. Thank you, ma'am. Funny because Olive is also going up to Eugene, I was, and I was. She's she's druid crafting a small, uh, red amaryllis flower, and she's just gonna tuck it behind his ear, and like it has like a little vine on it. It's just there. Everyone is just trying to comfort Eugene. Eugene has like the karate ear. hands. And he's like, oh, no. She's just smiling at you. Just, like, trying to comfort you. Yeah. Eugene the is taking like, all this in stride. to the side of his head because of the saliva mm -hmm. left behind from Walks Through Fog. 
<laughs> I wipe it off a little bit. Look, yeah, I'm looking at fog like fog has a huge long tongue and it's discolored almost like bruised so it's like purple with like black and blue hues in it discomfort grass hit it behind all of his massive uh canine teeth that he has you know you guys were right i shouldn't have worried about prepping too much uh we're spending 30 minutes at the front gate <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this well, is great. Eugene, Eugene is, is just gonna. This is about right for us. That is not me telling you guys you better move forward. That is me just really appreciating this group. I love this group. All right. So Eugene is going to like just kind of like do that like all right, all right, you know, like hand gesture with his hands, and he's gonna say, okay, so what what was your name? He's gonna turn to Calamity. I am Calamity. Consider me your wonderful helper for the time that you're here, yeah? Uh-huh. So, question. <laughs> Where, in fact, are we? We are at the Revalia, Hecna's Revalia. I do hope you enjoy your stay. It is a wonderful carnival full with all sorts of fun things for you to enjoy and have a laugh. Okay, Please, question number two. Us. Question number two. Who is, who is Hecna? Well, uh, out of character really quickly. Yep. Um, what is the word for it that he is again? A cosmic clown? No. Like, uh, what oh, is his... Yeah. His, his title here? Most people call him the ringleader and maestro. Well, he is our wonderful ringleader, our maestro. He is the reason so many fun things are here. Uh huh. Maze like, ooh. <laughs> yes. And then she yeah. does little slow, little tiny baby golf claps and then, to encourage May. And Are all of them heard of Hecna at this point? Yeah, you've heard. Uh, if okay. you've been in the Revelia for more than three seconds, you've heard of Hecna. Okay. All of us just like nodding along, like agreeing with it. All right. So he's the one that runs all of this. That's That's what I'm gathering. Yes, indeed. So he could let us leave. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he could. Okay, can we go to him? Well, how about we enjoy the festivities first? Well, see, we only just got here. Miss Calamity, I have stuff to do, and yeah. it doesn't involve your little carnival. Exactly. We but... need to leave. Would it ease your comforts to know that time doesn't quite work the same way? The, the color drains out of Eugene's face. No, actually, it does not. Aww. Um. Eugene, in the Paladin Order, you've heard of the Feywild. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it does to Yeah. Time. That's why Eugene is freaking the fuck out right now. Wait a minute. Is this just another, like, part of the Feywild? It and, is not. And Eugene says, As... I really must... I mean, I'll do whatever you ask. I am your helper for the eve. However, I really must recommend, at the very least, you all look tired. Maybe you should consider maybe getting somewhere to stay. Some food. I don't, I don't need to eat and I don't need to sleep. We should move. Um, well, I need to do both of those things. <laughs> uh, but also, um... Look, I'm, I'm having a very hard time understanding what's going on here so uh, can we go see this hecna person or is that just not in the cards right now um <sighs> calamity you know that there's a parade coming up somewhat soon and that'd be the people's best chance to see hecna but as to talk to him he's an elusive fellow and when he wants to talk to you you'll be talked to yeah well i mean on the up and upside maybe at some point he will decide you all are um exceptional people who are needed to be spoken to but um i'd say maybe you should stay around for the parade will hegna be at this parade oh of course he's the maestro is he not i guess <laughs> Yeah, Eugene is Eugene has resumed the squint. <laughs> and he's just like, "Okay. So we're going to stay until the parade." Gideon's just looking around in absolute disgust. 
and then we'll see Hecna. We'll tell him that this was a mistake, and he can send us home. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it'll be that easy, Eugene. It'll be very easy, Gideon. Thank you. Yeah, sure it will. It will be. It won't be. Let me have this. <laughs> no! Uh, May turns to them and is like, I am so excited that y'all are going to have some fun for once. And like, starts to jump up and down. Well, May... I said nothing about fun. And I know You're how going to... to have fun! I know how to have fun. It's just not here. <laughs> May you has learn. like this look of determination on her face. They will enjoy themselves. I am not allowed to enjoy myself. <laughs> well, that seems like a very sad existence. <laughs> it is an existence. One that I do not like, but it is an existence, and I must complete it. Gideon is going to get clownified so fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh right. Wrapping a flower for um, Gideon now. The Revelia does not <laughs> suffer this. Right. I'm glad you reminded me of this. Um, Calamity... Oh, sorry. Nick, you do your thing, Olive. Oh, I was just druid crafting a flower oh, for okay. Gideon. <laughs> nice. And then at the same time realizing that he's bald. <laughs> so... Um, Calamity's gonna, like, you. stare up at Gideon. And then, um, again, from the fucking same part of Hammer Space, a, a doll mask comes out. Um, and she unlocks the top half again. And um, we'll hold out the bottom half of the doll mask to Gideon. With Gideon, a... do, you, do you want to make me an insight check real quick? Uh, yeah, hold on. Okay. Uh, you had more description, please go ahead. Uh, I was about to say she smiled, but she's wearing a mask, so you can't really tell. You can see in the eyes. Um, nat 20. Okay. <laughs> Gideon, this is coming from a genuine place of concern. Like, like a they, little desperation behind the eyes. They, 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 what, well, for whatever reason, they think this mask might save your life. Enjoy the festivities a bit, yeah? <laughs> I would take the mask, I would look at it for a couple minutes, and to start off, I would just put it in the pocket of my robe. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, everybody. Um, have we had introductions? Do we all know each other? You're gonna want to. I mean, I suppose... I, I know May and Gideon and... Uh... You're, you're Calamity, and I... Yes! Uh, yeah, and... He turns to Olive and walks through fog and just looks at the both of them. Just waves. Are, are, are you guys coming with us? Well, you guys seem kind of interesting, so you kind of just fell into the circus. The more people we have, the faster we can probably get out of here, Eugene. They should come with us. Well, yeah, I mean, there's this strength This is a in... wretched place that nobody belongs in. There's strength in numbers, but... But when your numbers are this large, don't you think, like, too many we cooks in the kitchen? We are a fairly group, too. We're not very conspicuous. If you would like to remove me from your service, I am gladly willing to walk away. But I do think there is something to be said for um, enjoyment in numbers, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's a real party, I'm sure. They don't I mean it. Of course you're welcome. They're just being I, puffy. I may not like you, clown, but you will be useful at, at the moment. So... Yes, please lead the way. You it need more like friends, Gideon. Again. <laughs> friends only lead to hurt. And I turn to Calamity. I'm like, he's just, he's always this way. You're welcome. Okay. Well, um, so I believe you two, and then she points towards Olive and walks through fog, have not been formally introduced to the rest of this group. Are you cool. wanting to travel with them, or did you want to travel separately? Oh, I'd like to join. I'm very interested in all of you. <gasps> wonderful, wonderful. And what about you, big fella? Fog is just gonna kind of, like, shyly look to the ground and 
kind of like do a side eye thing of like he wants to answer yes, but he's like not sure if he should. Oh, I love him. Do I pick up on that? Yeah, yeah. It's, I feel like that's pretty. Uh, Fog. It, it's very they're, obvious. They're not a person of subtlety. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna take one of my like. I'm gonna try to like comfort Fog. I'm gonna take one of my buttons and I'm going to kind of present it to welcome mm-hmm. Fog. Fog, you are offered a gift of some kind of shiny. <laughs> it's a shiny. shiny. It's a shiny. <laughs> Fog is going to... It would be the action of sniffing, but there's a lack thereof <laughs> of said device. <laughs> um, and then he's going to open his mouth and his tongue is just going to kind of drop out a little bit. And you'll see that he's going to... Essentially, it is the action of going and eating it. (laughs) I don't care. It's a gift. (laughs) And he is going to proceed to chew on it. (laughs) It's crunchy. It is very crunchy. You will do just wonderfully here. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Well, is there anywhere you all would like to go? Anything you need? Well, these people want to rest, so maybe we should go and rest and then take to um, this place in the morning. Agreed. Um, you do know yeah. that there is a ticket booth for newcomers right. to get their tickets from and get some information okay. if they need it. Uh, but if they want to rest first, you also know that the hostile hustle is not too far mm-hmm. away. Okay, so there are two options we can do here. We can get you guys some tickets so you can have fun once you're rested and wonderfully set up or we can just head straight to the hostile hostel it's up to you the what what now the hostel <laughs> Ooh, i'm staying what? there no it's you said nice. no you said a word before hostel did i she said hostel <laughs> no. uh, you, gideon you heard that didn't you she said hostel twice no she said like <laughs> Like, there's the word hostile, and then, like, there was another... We'll find out. We'll, f- we'll find out. Do we have much choice, Eugene? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> then why are we sitting here arguing about this? Can we go? Yes, after you, please. Which one did you all want to go to? Love some We'll tickets. go to the hostile, please. Oh. Well... Tickets is fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to make a decision. <laughs> but going to get tickets first is fine with me. Well, the tickets are important. <laughs> Alrighty, everybody, and it's just a little clap, clap, like like kind of kindergartner school teacher ass. I hate that. Thank you. <laughs> I picture her skipping the whole time. Mayworth follows along with the claps. <laughs> yes, you can't tell if it's like she's skipping or if it's like. Her legs are sort of trembling as she walks all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, uh, single, well, not single file line, um, but we will start leading our little troop over to the ticket booth. Okay. You guys pass through the gates into the Revelia proper. Just inside the gates are two statues depicting a tall clown with his face hidden behind a mask. Slapped onto the midriff of one statue is a poster with the same figure and mask uh, as the clowns, except for the mask is animated and moving, and it gives you a wink. The statues are gold from head to toe. Every few seconds, they change poses. Imagine dramatic, like, showing off their muscles pose, and then, like, the next pose, they're just doing a dab. Um, stuff like that. They just, they'll shift to a new pose, sit on for a few seconds, and then shift to a new one. I'll all try them are very, the pose all is them a little are very dramatic and all that such. Um, and then every few seconds, um... Whenever they change the pose, a sound emanates from the statue, uh, or from statues at the same time. Welcome, my wary, winsome, wondrous visitors! Rally Rune for Revalia! Please do look around. Partake in the games, in the treats! There are no limits here. Whatever you can dream is yours. Just don't forget to smile. Before you is a wondrous, vibrant carnival. Sweethearts stroll hand in hand, munching on delectable treats. Creatures and persons of all kinds walk around with smiles on their faces. Fog, you actually feel like you still stand out a bit, but you don't stand out as much as you would have thought you would. Um, 
Laughter rings in the air. Strangely, strangely dressed clowns with brightly colored hair and outfits roam through the crowds. Everywhere there are many tents and buildings, most emblazoned with colorful signage. In the distance, at the center of the carnival, is a large colorful signboard. Behind it, a huge red tent looms. Its spires pierce the misty veil overhead. You also catch a, gl a glimpse of a glittering ferris wheel. Both the tent and the wheel appeal appear hazy like a mirage. Half hidden behind a nearby tent, sitting on the ground with an arm around their waist as they beckon you, is a humanoid figure. Um, real quickly, as a side note, Olive, you've tried making your way towards that Ferris wheel. Um, and I think I touched on this previously in your note stuff. You yeah. can't. You've tried. Mm -hmm. You've tried getting to the big tent, but every time you do, the circus seems to circle in on itself, as if it's not letting you get that far. But yes, there is a person yeah. hiding behind a nearby tent, looking injured, trying to gesture towards your group. And then they pause and they see Calamity, but it's already too late. And then you see like a, just a look of resignation. They continue to gesture towards your group, trying to get you guys to come over. Should we, should we help? They look hurt. Calamity, I assume you're leading us. Um, I think... You'll notice that Calamity definitely, like, turns her head to notice it, but then she kind of looks away and almost seems like she's trying to give just a bit of distance between her and the group while stopping a bit, like, slowing down. So if they wanted to go, they don't have to go with her. I think we should go speak to this man and see what ails him. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, as a note, for those who are particularly perceptive, it appears like Calamity is doing a look the other way maneuver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eugene frowns at that. He's going to go help the dude. Okay. So as you guys approach the figure, you see it is not in fact a dude, but a woman. An exhausted, stocky human slumps against the red velvet tent, her arm cradled against her chest. Her frizzy hair is graying and escaping its bun, and her once white lab coat is stained and patched. Despite the weariness on her face, her eyes are kind. She ties a splint with one hand to her broken fingers. She shuffles to make room behind the tent uh, for the party to join her before she speaks. <sighs> Don't worry about this, it'll heal in no time. How about you? Any of you have any injuries before we get going? I need to speak to you about something, but uh, I'd rather you all be in good health. Um, I will say, um, Calamity, once they've all gone to go do that, yeah. she's going to get somewhere where she can vaguely hear, just in case it sounds like they're in danger. Yep, okay. But she's not listening for anything besides raised voices. Yeah. Uh, get going where? Eugene says. Oh, well... More of a turn of phrase before I get started on talking to you all. You're new to the Revelia, yeah? I mean, regrettably, but yes. Very regrettably. <laughs> kind of. I'm sorry you're here. Why? I don't know. This place looks awesome. As well. No, wait. No, wait, guys. Why, why are you sorry? You see, like, they look around. Not spying Calamity. You see them get a little nervous. But they push forward anyways. This place isn't a circus. It's hell. The There's danger around every corner. It's all veneer. It's... I mean, even the clowns aren't right. My sister came here, Sophie, a while back, and she's changed. Changed how? It's complicated. And I don't have much time before I have to take off again. Just know, Tecna is always watching. If you see a poster of his, he can see you. He can hear you. Eugene, uh, like, swallows. He's just like... <sighs> um, ma'am, thank you for letting me know. Uh, thank you for confirming... My suspicions, uh, looks pointedly at May, um, but, uh... May is not paying attention. Yeah, she I know, but not it's okay. Anything. Um, <laughs> but he says, uh, I'm a, a paladin from the Order of the, uh, Platinum Dawn, and, uh, 
I'm sure that once I'm gone for more than a few days, the rest of them will come looking for me, so I think it'll be fine. I don't think you understand. This isn't a place you can just... go to. Hopefully. No one arrives to the Revelia by chance. Only Hecna chooses who can come, and he never chooses who can leave. Eugene's jaw, like, clenches. And I guess we really do have to go talk to Hecna then. <laughs> I wouldn't. Uh, e even Olive kind of, like, squints a little bit at that, at the, like, choosing people who can't leave thing. May notices other people are, like, feeling tense. The, the air is tense, and... yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, like, tries to mirror that, but isn't exactly sure what's going on. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> I can I can give you some tips. Um, the most important one, watch the moon. The moon tells you his mood. And she, like, points up. Right now, it's a full moon. Uh, right now, he's feeling confident in himself. He's lit up the whole Revelia for everyone to see. Um, if you want to know more about the moon phases and what they mean... I would talk to Locke at the Lost and Found. He's been here the longest out of a vast majority of us. Hmm. At least any of the ones I would talk to you. Um, and I see you already have a mask, and she looks to me where... <laughs> Who's wearing her mask? Yes. <laughs> There's a parasite here, one I've been studying. Uh, those in the know call them schnozlings. They look for those who aren't showing the proper amount of joy. And she looks to Gideon, who I assume just has permanent grump face. He is yes. the grumpy cat of the situation. He's yes, gray. and yeah. as, as she's saying that, he's just reaching in his pocket and like <laughs> grabbing his mask, not really grabbing it out yet. But he's going to kind of turn away from the group, take a couple steps away, put his hood up so it's covering most of his face. Mm -hmm. And then when no one sees, he's going to slide the mask on. Okay. The masks will only do so so much good for you. You you have, you have to play the game. Pretend, at the very least. If they Pretend. hear it, they will know. Hear what? A lack of joy. This is the happiest place in the multiverse, one way or another. I look at... I am all of a sudden uh, very worried for Eugene and Gideon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eugene, okay, this is a different Eugene. When you look at this Eugene, this Eugene is like a Eugene with purpose, okay? It's like, he's gone from... Oh, I'm very scared to like. Okay, no, now I know what I must do, and and he he still looks scared, but he's got like this clenched jaw, clenched fist, very like. All right, I see what this is now. I was correct, as I always am, and I understand. Um. Oh, also, I rolled it and then forgot to say it. Uh. Doctor Stella did an insight on Eugene saying he's a paladin. <laughs> yeah. They got a 19 on the die. Does uh, Eugene believe that statement? Yes. Okay. He does wholeheartedly. Okay. Um, I can only give so much more information. I do have to go. I have somewhere else to be. Um, what I can say, another important tip is the Jamboree is the safest. That's the area that you're in right now. Uh, where the veneer is thickest. They don't want to cause as much danger here. There, you will still find danger, but they don't want to cause as much because it could turn away the people who are at the front gates. Um, injuries are commonplace here, but and she like gestures to her arm. They don't usually get much worse than this, except for the odd schnozzling attack. Um, but the closer you get, and she gestures in the direction of that massive tent you saw, you can't see it from where you're at right now. Uh, more dangerous it gets. Do you have any questions? No, I think... 
I think you've answered enough for right now. If it's as bad as you say it is, you should probably uh, get going before they think anything suspicious. He nods. Find a place to rest. You don't look tired. Take care of yourselves. Stay in good health. After you get some rest, perhaps we could talk. Uh, if we do speak again, it'll be at the Lost and Found. I'll keep that what in mind. What should we ask for? Sorry, what? What's your name? Oh, I'm <laughs> Dr. Stella. I'm so sorry. I forgot to do introductions. Um, I'm like, I may. I, you may have. I don't know. I wasn't. Um, I wasn't paying attention the whole the whole time. <laughs> um, she looks a little flabbergasted. <laughs> but she just, she assumes the rest of the party will keep uh, get you up to date. <laughs> uh, yeah, Eugene says uh, she has a habit of wandering off. Uh, but thank you, uh, Doctor Still. So I'm her then. Don't let her get too far. I am the try not to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, my, my name's Eugene. My pleasure. Um, and you you watch as she like looks around for a little bit, as if she's like looking for a clock. And then stops and just kind of, okay, I should really go. And she takes off. All right, well. Seemed nice. Yeah, really nice. Uh, G Gideon, I, I assume you and I are on the same page right now. I do not even come close to thinking like Eugene. So please be more descriptive of what you are speaking we need to get out of here, and this place is basically Avernus, so... For once, yes, we do agree. All right, so let's play along. Let's make him pretend or think that, that, we, that we really enjoy it, and, and maybe you won't even have to smile underneath the mask if you don't want to. I... I... I might have a remedy for this if it works. Above table, Jask. Yeah. I, I have thought. Uh, I can never pronounce this correctly. Thought. Thought I'm a tree. Yeah. Thaumaturgy. Thaumaturgy. Could I just? It's a cantrip. Could I just keep casting that every minute to sound like the group is laughing? Yeah, you can. It allows me to make a noise, a yeah. booming voice, anything like that. So I would make it so that this sounds like all of the group is laughing yeah. in their laugh tones, so, well, except so for me. I would say because it is a cantrip, um, it's not like the group itself sounds like it's laughing. You are putting a laugh track to the group. Okay. <laughs> so it's not exactly everybody's voices because, again, it is only a cantrip. Um, okay. Um, but... To a casual observer, it will definitely, uh, like, it'll definitely sound convincing. I'm thinking to get past the posters and stuff like that, this would work. Maybe not Heckner himself, but the posters, we could probably fudge it. Do we see any posters around? Like, any close Back to us? Here, or you don't see any, but you can see, like, in the distance uh, in other areas. Some are visible, but, like... A distance. Okay. Calamity's definitely hanging out by one, just sort of looking up at the moon. Yeah, have yeah. we have we noticed that she's kind of like gone? You did notice well, you did notice that um when Dr. Stella was gesturing to bring you guys closer, Calamity did the I'm just going to look the other way maneuver. Um and then as you're like looking back towards where Calamity was, you don't see them there anymore until you start until you come around the corner and they're standing near a poster looking at the moon. <clears throat> so, is everyone going to make their way back to Calamity now? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So, so Eugene's going to, like, you know, like, in the in the old 1960s cartoons when they're walking and they're, like, <laughs> swinging their arms, like, oh, this is a great day. Like, doodly <laughs> D, I'm out doing stuff, you know. He starts doing that shit. And he's like, he's like, well, hi, Miss Calamity. How are you right now? I'm wonderful! How are you all? Oh, I'm fantastic! Thank you! I'm glad to see you're all enjoying the festivities so early! You haven't even gotten your tickets yet! Well, no, but I'm just raring to go, you know? <laughs> this um, is a wonderful place. 
<laughs> Meg is so that. excited that people are starting to have fun. <laughs> all the laughing, or laughing, all the laughs that Calamity does at the end of all her sentences. Can we tell if that's fake or not? Like, God. if it's forced? Make an insight. Uh, Jask, I have right. to run to the restroom. I'll be right back. That's okay. Oh, that's not very good. Oh, God. Where's my character sheet? Uh, 25. Yeah, I got 12. Ooh. Didn't go very well. Um, yeah, Rolled you really can't low. quite tell. Um, with a 25, though, I imagine, like... You can tell this is something that has been practiced for far longer than anybody has any right to practice. Um, <laughs> it's a strange, like, you know whenever you fake something to the point where it's sort of... You can't feel that it's fake anymore, but it's definitely not a real laugh. You know what I mean? Hey, stop bringing yep. reality into this. <laughs> like, it's a str like, it's a strange... Like, it's a persona thing. that's been taken on. Yep. Yeah, it's like, for the mask, it's real, but there's something behind those eyes that just reeks of a weird mix of both relief and, like, despair. Well, how about we get to the tickets, then, yeah? <laughs> yeah, let's go. If we must. I mean, yes, of course, let's go. <laughs> Right after you say that, you hear a distant, loud trumpet. <gasps> Calamity, you know that this marks the beginning of a parade. <gasps> you start to hear a drum beat begin. And it gets louder and louder. <laughs> wow! Uh, and she sort of throws her hands up, and then she does like a flourishing bow to the group. Um, she bends all the way down, and as she does this, you can see um, like a full, like, full bow where her body is basically perpendicular right yeah um the wings and how they're tied is a lot more noticeable and they twitch against the movement like they want desperately to be freed um and then she snaps back up just as quickly enjoy the parade let's uh keep going yeah jask i have a question I have an answer. So, um, the Order of the Platinum Dawn, angels are a big thing in that. Yep. Does she look like an angel? Like, can um, I roll religion or something? At a cursory glance, I would say she looks like an angel, but in that she's a winged humanoid that's not an Aarakrocra. Okay, so it, she doesn't, like, have any of the, like, like token celestial traits. Like, she doesn't, she doesn't glow or anything like that. Mm. Correct. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, oh, Eugene... That would have been really fun, because my favorite song to uh, play while while thinking Heckness stuff oh. is a song called Angels in Cages. I, yeah. yeah, you're right. So, <laughs> But so I'm a coward. Eugene <laughs> just kind of, like, he squints. Uh, he has this kind of, like, weird look on his face. Like, he can't he can't quite process what emotion is, is going through him right now. Because it's like, it, it's like this weird, like, pity. Like, oh, that looks like it hurts. Like, why is she doing that? Like, but this woman is probably going to try and kill me. But that's kind of sad. But, you know, it's like a bunch of emotions all at once. And he just kind of stands there and looks at her. And he's like, uh, so do they do these often? Or is this just a once in a while thing? Or It's a once in a while thing, by the way. It's every now and then, whenever the mood is particular for it. Uh huh. We <laughs> are just in time, and I kind of like you find are. an area to watch. <laughs> um, Calamity will sort of not hover over Mayworth, but she's definitely always keeping an eye on where Mayworth is. <laughs> like the mask mm -hmm. is following. Um, the drum beats and trumpets get louder, and as they do, the tents themselves start to move, not on their own, as you can see, revelers. Uh, inside the tents have picked up the posts, ripped them out of the ground, and moved them. They create a large path. Path oh, cuts man. just in front of your group. With an explosion of fireworks, a huge, lavish cart pulled by a menagerie of animals rounds the corner. <laughs> On the cart is a huge gilded cage. Absolutely magnificent craftsmanship. Inside the gilded cage is a gigantic antlion. Its large translucent ring, uh, wings are veined with deep green, resembling oval pieces of fractured glass. Its wings flap and beat as it dances and spins within the cage. 
acrobats swing from colorful ropes and silks around the cage as the insect screeches and bellows, and the cart is surrounded by costumed dancers. The performers all grin at the gathered crowd. Atop the gilded cage, you see a tall, humanoid figure. Decked out merrily in vivid reds and golds, he wears a pale mask, the same one featured on the Funhouse Castle in the Round of the Mervelia. Masked mouth is carved into a grin. The figure twirls a long baton, shooting gold, glittering fireworks into the sky. As he waves to the crowd in pirouettes, the moonlight almost seems to spotlight his elegant form. He is without question the star of the show, and as the cart passes, he turns towards you and blows a kiss, Eugene. Eugene, tell me if I have to roll deception for this. Eugene is the most terrified he has ever been. Ever. <laughs> like, <laughs> ever. But he is going to feign the greatest, like, yeah! Woo! Like that, like that shit. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll me a deception. Okay. But because you described Eugene as being the most terrified he's ever been, yeah. the DC is higher. Okay. Um, I would like to use one of my inspirations to get advantage, please. Absolutely. All right. Oh, that was wrong me, by the way. Uh, Jim, for setting up stream, you have inspiration. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's not good. I'm gonna... Uh, that's better. <laughs> so, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, what is Eugene's deception? Not very good. Um, it's actually okay. Um... So that is a, a 22. Okay. The eyes linger on you. You can feel them boring into you. And then he turns and shoots more fireworks into the sky as the sir, or as the parade continues past you guys. Yeah. Um, would anyone like to make an investigation or perception check? Uh, either one. Either yes. one works here. I, I can make uh, a perception check. By all means. <laughs> Ugh, 11. I don't know what we are perceptioning, but if it's relevant. Nin um, Ni 19. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 19? Yeah. It is relevant. It's, eight. Not okay, good. If it's relevant, um, Calamity is specifically checking out what's going on not necessarily at the uh parade but around the group like are people coming up to them and they're not noticing things like that okay as is very fitting may has rolled a six <laughs> <laughs> uh so oh i see it yay eight okay beep. you don't you don't think you see anyone like doing anything untowards the group like there's mm -hmm. absolutely people around people are crowding the area yeah but no one's doing anything like pickpocketing or getting violent to the group uh eugene mm -hmm. i believe you're the only one who got above a 15 yep you 19. see what appears to be fishing wire stringing up that antlion and it's not dancing it's writhing the thin wire digs into its flesh under its chitin and it's forced to dance and sway. You see some of the acrobats and other performers have tears in their eyes, despite the wide smiles. Uh, anybody and, who... Oh, go ahead. And under the light of the fireworks, off in the distance, carved into the side of a, um, like a wagon thing, you see a mark that's hard to get the finer details but it just it looks like almost graffiti and you haven't seen any graffiti around but as the firework dims the market disappears yeah uh eugene is going to uh like he looks sad first of all and then he's like oh yeah i'm supposed to be like pretending to have fun but he's going to uh, reach into his armor, uh, pull out his holy symbol, the Pelor, and just like hold it clenched in his uh, fist. And he's going to recite uh, his prayers in his head just over and okay. over and over again as he like looks at these people. Eugene, when you do this, make me religion roll. All right. <laughs> That's a natural 20. That's 23. Nice. <laughs> so, Eugene is no cleric. 
He's not even really like a paladin. paladin. He's not. He's never had a direct connection to the deity, but yeah. almost like there being a background noise and not noticing it until it's gone, you do not feel that connection. Like the connection to to Pelor or like Pelor, yeah, yeah. So like I don't like I don't like I I. I I feel like there should be something, or I don't feel it. Yeah, like, like you, you've never once before necessarily felt it. Yeah, but that's because you're not a cleric. You're not a a a, pa a divine paladin. But you, but you could always feel it in some sort of prominence, like around. Yeah, the, and I don't feel that. It's 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 the lack of it that you're feeling now. Yeah. Eugene, Eugene, like looks at the back of the parade. He says. <laughs> It is always the single light that shines brightest in the night. And he's just gonna like nod at the back of the parade, like it, like it, like it Hecna's ass, you know, and mm -hmm. and be like, and, and and then he's gonna put the holy symbol back on and just like. And before and, Eugene shits Hecna's pants. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm gonna cast power word. Shit yourself. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, Eugene doesn't curse. <laughs> Mayworth plays the brown note. Ah! <laughs> um, as the parade passes you by, you see a clown um, riding on a unicycle approaching you. Um, Calamity, you've seen this clown before. Mm -hmm. You know that their story is tragic. No one told you what their story is, but you know it's tragic. Uh, and she's known as Pinky. Um, she is dressed in a shabby black and white polka dotted suit with bright scuffed red boots. She's mm -hmm. riding a unicycle and you know personally that Pinky is always in motion. Mm -hmm. um, her hair is pink uh, and is teased into a cotton candy like texture. She has sharp monstrous Ooh. teeth that don't fit her mouth um, and her tongue is bubblegum pink. Hence her name. And you can oh. see her unicycling up to the group. Okay. Um, so I'm going to um, make a motion that makes no sense to anybody in the group. Um, I don't even think it makes sense to Pinky, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's just she does something really quickly with her hand. Um, sort of like a swatting motion almost with like fingers splayed just a bit. Yeah. Um, and she gets a bit like more bouncy on her feet. Um, and she smile, and well, she's not smiling, but her eyes crinkle. Yep. And she gives, like, a big welcoming gesture, but she's also going to be very sure that she's ready to jump out of the way. Okay. Because Pinky don't stop moving. Nope. Um, and uh, uh, she's gotten better on the unicycle since you yeah. first met her. And instead of just crashing through the group, she circles the group <gasps> and then comes to something of a stop. Not quite an actual stop, more of she's now like going back and forth in front of the group. Hey, look um, at that! Right? I'm being so good now! I'm proud of you! That is amazing! You are thank wonderful! You. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I just noticed some fresh faces! <gasps> Hello! Yes! Um, May is just super excited about this, uh, unicycle. She's like, what is that? And where can I get one? a unicycle. Uh -huh. And they're wonderful. Uh-huh. If you want one, uh, I would try, check out, uh, Locks Lost and Found. <gasps> mm hmm Or the souvenir shop. Um... Okay. I turn to everyone else. I'm like, mm, I know where we're going first. Well, first we're going to get some rest. And then we can go to the rest is very is. important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, but did you want to introduce yourself to these wonderful new faces? Yes. Hello, I'm Pinky. Uh -huh. And actually, hold on. And she reaches into her bag and she pulls out what looks like a large piece of paper. Um, that's a map of the Revelia. And it folds itself a bunch until it's like in the crude shape of a mouth. <gasps> uh, and I'm Matthew Map McNally. 
Look at that iconic duo. Simply amazing, right, guys? Yeah, I'll clap a great. little bit. <laughs> I'm so happy about the map. <laughs> no, you're mappy about the map. See, <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm learning. You're doing great, Eugene. Thank you. <laughs> May is so proud. <laughs> what have you been up to, huh? Oh, right. Sorry, I got distracted. I was staring at the, the new faces here. I mean, some of them are so exotic. And she's just right? staring at Gideon. Not Fog, Gideon. <laughs> Fog's not he the would just be kind of like, it is. <laughs> um, avoiding the eye contact with her, and just kind of looking away and looking up, looking down, looking sideways. Like, don't look at me. Yeah, just right. So, um, <gasps> some some pointers. Uh, if you can find somebody to teach you how to speak gobbledygook, otherwise, so many things are gonna fly right over your heads. <laughs> um, also, I don't know if you've been told, I'm sure Calamity here has shared with you, uh, Hostile Hostel, that's the place to rest. Wait. In the food court, that's how you get food. Uh, wait, hold on. Pinky, was it? Yeah. Can you say that again? The what? The hostel. The hostel? Yeah, yeah. the, no, the... Oh, okay. Hostel, Eugene. What part of this don't you get, Eugene? It's a hostel. <laughs> we're gonna go there and we're gonna rest. Eugene, so, Eugene, like, um, so Eugene, what a hostel is? It's like a hotel, but instead, may I know what a hostel is? Explain what a hostel is. May I know what a hostel is? <laughs> Just, okay. Then look, why a is shiny this such thing. An issue? No, look, a sh look at the shiny thing. I'm gonna go over here, and Eugene just takes two steps backward and like stands. <laughs> Right. Uh, I do look. I do thing. look for the shiny thing. That's, there's shiny things everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> I start running towards the nearest one. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> I start running towards it. Yeah, Eugene goes, no. Eugene, go get her. Uh, yeah, he's already on his way. <laughs> Matthew Matt McNally just kind of what an airhead. Uh, Pinky <laughs> glares at the map and goes, hey, be nice. They're new here. <laughs> Now, okay, the other main important thing is we don't use gold, we don't use dollars, we don't use rubles. Uh, that doesn't work here. Well, I mean, Locke might take something, but I don't think he usually takes currency. He usually wants objects or things, usually things outside of the Realia. But uh, yeah, so you're going to need tickets. Uh, Calamity, were you going to show them where the ticket booth is? Absolutely, that's where we were just heading. Awesome, so I don't need to help with that. Um... Yeah, I mean, do you have any questions? I mean, I know you have Calamity here to guide you, but, like, I want to help, too. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and she sort of does another little flourishing gesture. Eugene is running after May, so... <laughs> oh! May is gone, so is Eugene. <laughs> I think she's gonna do, like, a lean over, like, a comedic sitcom one and, like, yeah. air nudge. I think they're all a little overexcited, don't you think? <laughs> I think so. I think they're gonna fit right in. Oh, don't you just! Um, Eugene and May, I, I'd say you, you guys are able to, Eugene, you're able to catch May pretty quickly. They probably found the nearest shiny thing. Um, which you know what? Give me just a moment. Eugene just drags her back to the group. May, mm -hmm. um, in the path that the the um, parade had taken, you found a gold monocle frame without the lens. Oh my gosh! I put that thing on immediately. <laughs> Naturally, <laughs> but before you put it on, Eugene just like slaps it out of your hand. Mm -mm, I pick it back up. No, it's on. Look, we don't. <laughs> You never heard of cursed <laughs> objects before, Mayworth. I'm so proud of myself. I'm like, we can go back now, Eugene. Thanks for pointing out the treasure. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> uh. All right, so what are we doing? I think uh, we were going to go get tickets, and I walked back. To the rejoin group. the group. You can see Pinky's patiently waiting. Hi! Yeah. Um, before I headed out, I wanted to ask if you have any questions. Uh, and I, I didn't want to, like, leave before you could ask questions. No, not really. I think all my questions got answered. Thank you. Okay. Well, you have fun. 
Oh, and I remember, will. You can only leave the Revelia when a Chugahu poppies the doggus, and then she just rolls off. <laughs> Bye! Uh, Eugene's eyebrows go up, and he's uh, like, he turns to Calamity, she's like, what did she say? Um, With Calamity. Gobbledygook. Yeah, Calamity, you speak gobbledygook, right? Mm-hmm. Um, she said, when a train leaves the grounds, which is a phrase used around here in a very similar fashion to when pigs fly. Um, she sort they of just can't thinks... say when pigs fly because pigs do fly around here. Yeah. Oh, um, when trains leave the ground. Meaning. When trains leave the ground. So that, like, that's not clarifying it for us. Is is there a train? <laughs> no. Um, and then she's gonna start walking. Eugene exhales <laughs> and he's like, G Gideon, just. Yeah. I understand. Ish. I understand you now. <laughs> Do we know what trains are? Um, I'd assume Olive at least has no idea what a train well, is. Yeah, Olive has no idea, but I'm going to say for the sake of simplicity, everybody else probably has at least an idea. They might not have seen it. It might have been something talked about in foreign lands being mm -hmm. produced, but you, do, you wouldn't know that trains are massive vehicles that um, are, are like a couple hundred carts worth of space. Responding to Eugene, I look at him and say, all I wanted to do, Eugene, was die. Well, and she you, brought me well, back. It makes me deal with this. No, you hear no. a voice from the ground? Not right next to you with that one. Eugene looks down. You see... Uh, McNally, the map. Still folded up into his mouth. Whoa. Oh. E Eugene's gonna, like, bend down and, like, pick him up with two fingers. Like, <laughs> okay. holding him by the corner of the mouth. Why did she leave you? She didn't. I escaped. What do you mean you escaped? <laughs> I mean, I waited for her to try to put me away and then nudged out. Like this. And he, like, you can feel him tense and then loosen uh, and then stop. tense and then loosen. Stop! Okay. Okay. So... Are are you are you evil? I mean I I believe that depends on your perspective. I mean chaos for the fly is order for the spider, is it not? <laughs> he just shakes the mouth. <laughs> that All depends. Right. Are you a spider or a fly? Alright, I'm a paladin. Now you're a map, right? Last I checked. So we Hold we... on, let me check again. And he unfolds into a map? Refolds into the mouth. Yes. <laughs> okay. So you're Eugene Light turns around. You're gonna help us. Okay. Because we need help. Until I get bored. No, you're gonna help us. We'll see. I'm a very powerful paladin. You're gonna help us. I'm a very powerful map. <laughs> it's a low bar, but I'm still powerful. <laughs> do I believe Do I believe the map? <laughs> I can't I'm a very powerful map. I can't. I can't. Oh. You made me break character, you motherfucker. I am <laughs> just the deadpan. I'm a very powerful map. <laughs> I can't even say. Roll insight if you want to check that, Olive. Oh, I did. Oh, oh I did. What'd you get? I, I rolled a net uh -oh, too. Oh, too. Okay. Um, as far as you can tell, the map believes it. Oh my god, I rolled an eight. I rolled eight total. Okay. Yeah, I got a six in total. Jesus. He's hard to read. He's a map. And you, you, and Eugene goes. He's currently closed. You'd be able to read him. He's a map. He, you, you'd I mean, be able to read him better if he was opened up. And Eugene says, "Okay, so your your name's Matthew, right? Yes. All right. Or McNally. I'm I'm Eugene. And frankly, I don't want to be here either. I assume you don't want to be either. No, no, I want to be here. McNally is amazing. Oh, okay. Well, that's a perspective. You want to be here. So could you? In theory, use your mathness and mapness to lead us in the direction that we needed to go. Yes, I can lead you in the direction you need to go. All right. Will you do it, do it. of your own volition? Yes. All right. So we have an understanding. Yes. Okay. Can I put you in my pocket? 
I don't like being folded up. I can't hear things when I'm folded up. Do would you do do you want to like nestle yourself in my armor? <laughs> that almost sounds more humiliating. Just put me in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I mean, I, I I can't just hold you. I gotta have my hands for you know sword things and stuff. Give give me the map. No, we have an understanding. I don't trust you. We have an understanding. I don't Gideon. trust you with the map um, anyway, Eugene. You're probably gonna lose it. Calamity. Yeah. Something jostles in your memory, and you know Matthew is a mm -hmm. die-hard Hecna fan, and they will uh, report the Hecna. Right. So, um, Calamity has been sort of like trying to slowly get over to the thing, and then she turns around. She sees Matthew, and then there's a little clap, clap. How about I take care of the map? I'm a bit more familiar with the place, yeah? And she will grab it. Uh, and she, like, relinquish the map? Yes. Yeah, I don't think Eugene's gonna gonna fight against the scary clown lady. <laughs> so, so he just lets her have the, the mouth. Hey, okay. Matthew, how you doing? Better now that I'm away from Pinky. Well, you be nice to her. She's no. doing her best. And then I'm going to very mercilessly fold put him, him into hammer space. Yeah, fold him up, put him into hammer space. You like you can hear him trying to argue, but as you start to fold him and his mouth like, <laughs> is no longer form, <laughs> he no longer can actually form words. And then you just put him in a hammer space. A bit isn't funny anymore, Matthew. Um, that's what she's doing as she's folding <laughs> it. <laughs> and then she does a grand flourish. Um, May all clap. right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I work very hard on my presentation. <laughs> um, so is, well, I mean, we have you, so I assume we don't need a map, but a map would have been oh! nice. Yes, I mean, no, a map is very nice. I do have Matthew still. I just think it's for whenever we actually need, need it, you know? Oh. No need to have it out and open all the time. I mean, You've I... given us no reason to not trust you, so I will <laughs> go as you say. <laughs> and it's just a little clap, clap. Eugene just kind of shrugs. All right, take a booth then, everybody. Or did you want to go to the hostel? Hostel first. Well, no, we may want to go get tickets. tickets. <laughs> may okay, wants to go get our tickets. And, and then, then I have to see a tickets. man about a unicycle. <gasps> Very important. <laughs> No, no, May. After the tickets, Eugene needs to go rest. This has been way too overwhelming for him right now. He needs to go and rest. Okay. Fine. We're gonna go get, get, we're gonna go get your tickets, so you'll be happy about the tickets, and then Eugene's gonna go rest. Get, get Fine. Tomorrow I'll see a man about a about a unicycle. Mm -hmm. if we have time. I think we have to go there anyway. If we have time, you can go see about the unicycle. But we need to get out of here. Uh, I love that Gideon has just no, become dad. I, 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 I I'm actually fine. I just thought that you know sitting would be nice, but thank you, yeah, Gideon. Yeah, come on. I suppose. And yeah, um, Eugene's gonna follow. Calamity's going to um. How is as she's walking, she's gonna peer back at the group, um. And she's just kind of quietly checking in. Does Fog look like he's vibing, or is he just sort of... What's Fog looking like, besides a whole unit? <laughs> a whole unit. That is Fog in a nutshell. Uh, a Fog is unit. kind of picking up on the vibes <laughs> of everybody, so he's a little bit of a mix of everything going on. Right. But he will pick up on probably whoever like is like showcasing like the most vibe. Mm -hmm. so oh, Mayworth. Yeah, yeah, Mayworth and Calamity and Gideon and Eugene are more or less everybody he's picking up off of. <laughs> right. Um, so she's gonna sort of um, kind of gesture him to walk in the front with her as she does like a silly little march, right? Okay. Like she's just trying to make a whole little bit of it. Um, and then she sort of turns around again, like sort of twisting her torso. Um, ah, and then she sort of points towards Olive. Ah? Uh? Yeah, I don't think I know your name. 
Oh, well, you got most of it. Uh, oh, well, there we go. Live. Uh, uh, live. Oh, I'll live. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. You have any fun Hi. jamborees as we make our way to the ticket booth? Uh, I can I can play a little song on my lute. <gasps> sure, let's do it. Let's have fun. Yeah, and she'll just like to like try to match the surrounding and like her loot is covered in vines by the way like it looks like it should not function but it functions pretty well uh may has pulled out her loot as well <laughs> oh yeah hell yeah <laughs> wonderful so, let's get let's get a performance check uh, oh god either both of you can or one of you can with advantage um i'd like to assist either way through um okay so let's have both of you god. let's have both of you actually roll with advantage Oh, with Calamity assisting. By the way, Calamity, when when you your group had first That's started it. to start walking again after the, the Matthew incident, when mm -hmm. you turned around, you could see one of the Hecna posters were pointedly staring at you. <laughs> That's a nat twenty. So nice. twenty six. Hey. And I got a dirty twenty. Nice, <laughs> nice. You guys, what with Calamity what? doing the little parade march, the rest of you following, and the music started. You guys actually start a parade. You guys start a smaller <laughs> parade. Some some clowns join in, and they also are going to roll a performance with advantage for a total of 19. And you have other revelers joining in, some of the rubes. Um, for, for those that don't know, the, the terms revelers and rubes, rubes are people who are brand new to the uh, Revelia, uh, and revelers are people who are clearly here a while, and are dressed in Revelia clothes. Usually they run things in the Revelia. Um, like Calamity is a rude. Or sorry, Calamity is a reveler. They've been here for a while. They work for the Revelia. Olive is a rube. They've been here, but they haven't like become part of. Yeah. Um. um sorry. Go for no, it. it's okay. But yeah, you guys okay. start a yeah, you guys start a whole ass second parade, but in the opposite direction. May has never May. felt so good. She is remembering Eugene mentioned something about magical items. She's pretty sure this monocle has given her some kind of performance power. Oh my god. No, magical items was the exact opposite of what he said, but thank you for remembering, May. <laughs> yes, it is. yes, it was. Her magic <laughs> item. To be fair, that's that. probably how she heard it. Yeah. That's exactly how yeah. she heard it. <laughs> so, first so is magical. <laughs> so Fog is going to reach into this uh, matted uh, piece of fur that's essentially right under his chin. If you guys look at the uh, picture, you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, that's actually a pocket of matted fur. So mm -hmm. Fog is going to just reach up into it and pull out a horn. It's just a horn from some animal that's been hollowed out. And he's just every so often going to try and blow on it, but it's not going to make the greatest noise. <laughs> no, you don't have lips to wrap around it. Nope. <laughs> so he's kind of mimicked, mimicked lips with his long fucking tongue by just kind of wrapping the end of it. But it's wow, that's not really work that great. Yeah, this, yeah. Is almost, yeah. this is May is vibing. She's harmonizing oh with the weird tune. <laughs> Gideon is just saying in his head over and over again about how much he just wishes he would die right at the second. <laughs> and, he's not saying it out loud. It's just over and over in his head, he's just wishing he was dead. Yeah. How's Eugene feeling? Uh, Eugene is saying prayers to Pelor as he walks. Uh, <laughs> some for some for Gideon, some for Mayworth, uh, uh, some for Calamity, some for uh, the, the skeleton thing, uh, I guess. Um... And uh, he's just like, he's just like, all right, I know I'm probably the only one here, but like, I got to make sure everybody's prayed up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, bless, yeah. bless he, up, homie. You know what I'm saying? Has not introduced himself. So he, no one, he's just walking around. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Like, um, like outwardly, he is partying inside. He is at church. <laughs> <laughs> Party in the front, church in the back. Yeah. Um, a Boy. crowd surrounds a red velvet booth, denoted by a wooden sign that reads, Get your tickets here. In front of the booth is a fountain spewing water droplets that are shaped like tickets. The people in the crowd are dressed in wild, colorful clothing, and they converse with one another loudly, laughing and shouting. Eventually, the line moves forward and seems to almost part for you guys. 
uh, considering the whole parade possession you've started. Um, operating the booth, you can see a doll-like person wearing a frilly pink dress. Her blonde hair is in tight ringlets. Strings of red tickets are attached to her limbs and clothing, wound up above her into the velvet fabric with more hanging in streams from a small satchel attached to the side of her dress. She hands a small ticket booklet to the people in line uh, before you before looking to you. R Raleigh Rune Vor Revelia! Ver burnt smorky oozent a boonderboon. You must have come here for your free tickets! Otherwise, how are you going to pay for all your lovely thingamabobs? Her mouth stays in an ever-present, wide-stretched grin as she waits for a response. Um, what is this thingamabob? Yeah. Um, one more time? I said, what is a thingamabob? It's, it's like a... Like, like, like a... Uh, you, you know, and she just kind of gestures at nothing. Yeah, it, it looks like they've got at least 20. <laughs> or something. <laughs> she nods sagely. <laughs> I appreciate my low-key Disney reference, everyone. <laughs> I did. I got it. Um... May thinks that she missed something, but she's going to pretend like she didn't. She's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, real quickly, who has a passive perception above 12? Uh, um, I think I have a 16. I have a 13. 13, yeah. This is straight up not a person. This is a doll. You are speaking to a marionette. Uh... Eugene's just like parted way for the group to speak to her, just sort mm -hmm. of pleasantly standing at the side, like robot Alexa energy. Uh, Eugene's just like, so um, how many tickets do we get? Right, the tickets. Right. Each of you get ten red tickets, and she pulls red tickets off of her dress, uh, which is made of the red tickets. Um, okay. And you see that like they just refill in. They they seem to like leave from the satchel she has. And refill the spot. God, that has she big pulls... Coraline energy. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, absolutely. She pulls 10 of these tickets free and hands them off to Eugene. Pulls 10 more and hands them off to uh, Gideon. 10 more, hands them off to Mayworth. 10 more, hands them off to Olive. Excuse me. And 10 more and hands them towards Walks Through Fog. May pretends to polish her monocle and then examines the tickets. <laughs> um... <laughs> They are simply red tickets with Hecna's face on either side, and just the uh, number one on either side of Hecna's face. I'm like, uh, May goes, ah, and tucks them away in one of her pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Eugene just folds it up and sticks it inside of his uh, satchel. Okay. As Fog has seen two people do this now, he's going to essentially do the same thing by just putting it back into his matted pocket, along with his horn. Okay. I also um, like that Olive got another ten. Yep. <laughs> uh, she was gonna pretend. Uh, you can see Polly, like, twitches oh. a little bit, um, and then pulls out another ten red tickets and offers them towards you as well. There is a pause of confusion, like not a, there's like a slight pause, like, and then she's taking it before it can be taken back. <laughs> uh, Calamity, you happen to know, the marionettes, they're, they're great, um, mm -hmm. for like, auto labor stuff. Yeah. They only have so much memory. Right. Awkward sweating. Um... <laughs> She checks everyone for being good, and then she sort of does another little open palm gesture where she just sort of gestures out forward and starts to um, skitter away. Okay. Before we leave the ticket booth, this is where we're going to take our break. We'll take about a 10 minute break. All right. It is going to be 746 yeah. where I'm at. So at 756 is about where I would like us to all be at least here and talking again we don't necessarily have to get started right away but mm -hmm. okay yep. go ahead and get some water all right yeah. yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna run to the restroom and grab another water yep. uh and then i shall return
Yep, I'll be right yeah, back in here. Same. Oh, this has been so much fun already. Okay, I'm back. Love this music so much. I return. Welcome back. Jimbis. Yes. Do you happen to know if Twitch is still like super gung ho about trademark music? Uh, we should probably be fine. Okay. Well, like the circus, like the, this music, I've already gotten um okay, the okay from Hitpoint Press to you. Yeah. Um, but I was looking to start adding some more music so we don't just cycle through the same songs over and over and over. Uh, yes, they are still gun ho about copyright music. Okay. Yeah. I will get parts of my stream muted. Okay. Yeah. I um, or or oh, the please, stream. Uh, yep. But uh. But yeah, uh, I was just going to take a second to say uh, thank all of you who are watching. There are ten of you here, and that's ten more than I thought would show up. So, <laughs> you know, thanks for being here, you guys. I appreciate you. As uh, do I. This is well, not what we normally do on twitch.tv forward slash Uh but uh, okay. it's it's a welcome change of pace. I've wanted to do this for forever. And it's just that this is this is literally something that I've wanted to do for you know as long as I've been a Twitch streamer. So like the fact that I'm doing it right now is just kind of like <laughs> I'm almost like the big boys except not. You know? <laughs> and well, I'm glad that I'm able to provide a space for you to do that with. Yeah, I mean, we're 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 both mutually we're, providing we're both for each other right now. Yeah, hell yeah. 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 I think. For sure. Yeah. But yeah, um, normally, upon this channel, uh, we play uh, roguelikes, mostly, um, card games, and hard games, basically anything that uh, can make me rage. Um, <laughs> and uh, I want to thank... Nope. No, there, there wasn't any, no, there wasn't any new follows, I don't think. Um, no, there wasn't. Uh, but the two of you that did follow, thank but you very much, I appreciate that. Um... I hope we can make this a regular thing, like streaming on the on the channel, because you know. And then, you know, if we if something happens and people really like the the scary clown, uh, then hopefully, like, I I, I, I hope the best for this series, because yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say if you want, we can just like I, I just won't even bother setting up my Twitch to do it if you if you want to keep hosting it. Well, I mean, yeah. See, yeah. that's what I thought because, like, I mean, I can just be your guy in the chair. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. and if and if 
you know, like, we want to change anything or we want to do something else. I mean, this is a collaborative effort between you and I, so, like, you know, we just... Yeah, for we sure. just do. For sure. Um, and also, for any of the, the group that's still here, I don't know I, if anyone else is currently at their mics, uh, this is a collaborative yeah. thing of the whole group. So if any of you have any, like, things you would like to see happen, I know Gideon has already messaged me about a magic item he would like to see at some point. Um, give me a wish list of magic yeah. items. Oh, um, I, ha I have one. If you give me a wish list of magic <laughs> items, I, I can't promise you'll, you'll get them. I can promise they'll be in the game. I have... Or at least some of them. I have two things. I a headband of intellect, and uh, the War Mage's longsword, but I may have to find that one. Um, I have the brain of a river rock, so message me them. Yeah. And I, I have a list of things in a um, channel none of you can see. Uh, it's my DM notes. Uh, thank you, thank you, moth, the moths and frogs. I almost can't say your name. Moths and frogs. Moths and frogs. Moths and interior crocodile alligator. I don't know. Moths and frogs. Moths, moths and frogs. Moths and frogs. Anyway, I just, I like saying it. It's, it it's the thing that I do. But, uh, yeah, so. Held. Band. I'm not um, asking yeah. for this, but I just had a fun thought occur through my brain. Yeah. A deck of many things. No. Um, no. no. <laughs> Veto. So, I, I'm, I'm literally not against giving you guys a deck of many things that is themed to Hecna. Um, I'm, I, I, oh, might actually, yeah. I might actually put in the extra work to go through the deck of many things and change it up. To Shit. be more Hecna themed. When did four of you get here? Dang! I'm <laughs> hydrating. Everybody hydrate. Somebody paid for a hydrate. Everybody hydrate. I'm drinking coffee. Well, drink more. <laughs> I did hydrate. Do I drink. Fox uh, also did a hydrate. I sipped. I sipped twice. Ooh. Man. But what you're saying, Jim, is if I if I redeem the push-ups, everybody would have to do push-ups. Yes. I have 3,000 points. That's, D um... <laughs> Don't. That's 15 push-ups. Don't. The whole group. <laughs> Don't. But, I mean... Huh? What are we talking about? <laughs> no, no, Beep, Beep. What I want you to do is just motion your arms at the air like you're doing a push-up. Just pretend. I feel you beep. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but just like, just like, do the put, do the push-up motion as best you can with your arms, just like fifteen well, times. No, 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 Fox, you you would actually be able to get off the ground with some work. Beep wouldn't. What are we? What are we talking about? Uh, doing push-ups. Call life alert to get up. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. Help, I've fallen and I can't turn up. <laughs> Jim, I want you to know that you just killed Chuck with that. <laughs> Imagine me dabbing. I dabbed as I did oh, that. Oh no, Chuck has died twice. Oh no. <laughs> Speaking of which, my guy, I would have tried to save you. <laughs> The one called Chuck is dead, and the world is poorer for it. The lack thereof, uh, sausage plants and random cookies on the ground. There better still be those. <laughs> I'm going to be very upset if there isn't those. Because remember, everyone, if it's on the ground, it's for Aster. Also, Just uh, so I... Yeah, what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to ask, just in case it happens and Gideon dies, do we have another uh, uh, capable healer? No. Uh, I would be negative. Yeah, I have... Like, I can... I have healing spells, but it's not exactly my specialty. We have a druid and a bard, so, like, those are two yeah. one-half healers. 
He's a yeah. Paladin. I have I have some healing powers, but it's not like same thing. It's not my thing. Yeah, uh, he's, like, he's a paladin in spirit. With their powers combined, they have a functional <laughs> healing. What oh, the twins? Hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, also, uh, also, uh, for the uh, four of you or five of you that just joined, holy shit! Um, if you have not followed, please drop a follow, as you will be able to see whenever I go live and whenever we do this. So if you haven't dropped a follow, please do and join the Skeleton Army today. You get a cool mm -hmm. little bone thing next to your name. Why wouldn't you want to do it? Right, Where is that link again? Uh, Important links. Yeah. Yep, yep. Nope. So, Moths and Frogs, what you're going to do is, uh, are you on a phone or on a computer? You're on a phone? So yep. what you're going to do is you're going to go to uh, the channel page. You're going to click on, like, the channel page uh, that you're uh, on. So, like, it'll take you to my channel. And uh, there will be a follow button a for follow you button. somewhere on the channel page. Yes. Hey, thank you, Moss and Frogs, for the follow. Thank you. I appreciate you. Little kisses. Thank you. <laughs> For that. I want kisses. Well, unfollow and refollow. <laughs> One forehead okay. kiss for each follow. There we go. No, my lips would be so cracked and dry. There's 110 of you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that chapstick ready, man. Be like, be like SpongeBob lubing up <laughs> to play Squidward's loot. Just like, loot. Or Squidward's fucking <sighs> clarinet, not loot. He doesn't play a loot. What the fuck am I? <laughs> Curly, I'm going to have to ask you to stop. I only have so much LaCroix, bro. Oh, okay. That's your I punishment for having LaCroix. Right now. Am I the only one that doesn't have Twitch downloaded? I have it up on my browser. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, Curly, that's Chuck. Oh, that is Chuck. Oh, hello. Yep. Greetings, the one called Chuck. How are you in the afterlife? Imagine being dead. Can't really... <laughs> Elysium, I've been dead on the inside for far too long. You know, that might actually earn him some respect. That'd be the most goth thing he'd said ever. <laughs> well, it's fine, because one day I shall revive like the phoenix that is my namesake. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we have everybody here? Let's do your sound off. Calamity, you're here. Yep. yep! Eugene, you're here. Yeet! Gideon, you're here. Yes. Mayworth, you're here. Hi! Octave is here, I hear them. You're Olive, you're here. Hi. And walks through fog. Yee yee. Okay. Is everybody ready to get started, or do you just hang out for a little bit more? I'm good with whatever. Yeah. I'm ready. I, I have sufficiently burned my tongue on some tea, but that's fine. <laughs> Riley, we've talked I was like, this. I was rushing to get tea. <laughs> I did Perfect. that earlier, don't worry. Okay. So you guys were leaving the ticket booth, heading yeah. in the direction yeah. of the hostile hostel. The what? The what? hostel. The hostel. Of course. <laughs> Mayor tries like to explain what a hostel is again. <laughs> I also like the idea that like, Olive knows the name of this place, but just hasn't corrected it or like <laughs> given Eugene nope. the information. She's just like, yeah. I'm loving the meme. All right, so yeah, Eugene's just like, like he's saying the the paladin prayers like a mantra. He's just just over and over again in his head, just fucking doing shit. So if he can see um, him, if you can, they worth is walking beside him, and she's like, "And what's really cool is there's like a community place where you gather with everyone else that's at the hostel." And you, Eugene is going like, "Yeah, yeah, uh huh," <laughs> like not paying attention at all, but but saying like, "Yeah, uh huh, yeah." I like how Mayworth and Eugene's relationship is just they don't pay attention to one another. 
<laughs> oh no, he plays. He pays plenty of attention to Mayworth. It's just not in like. It's in like. Don't put that fork in that socket, you smooth-brained acquaintance of mine. <laughs> and May just like May gets just distracted. Like... Yes. And she continues further about how it's a great place to make friends and. Uh huh. Um, as you approach the hostel, it comes into view. The two-story inn is made of mismatched wood, hastily constructed to form a narrow building that leans slightly to the right. Embedded on the building's facade are windows of various shapes and sizes. The hot pink door is covered in half-eaten candy and gum. A record of thousands upon thousands of revelers sticking their gum to the peeling wood. To the left of the door is a flickering neon sign, illuminating only the me in the word welcome. <laughs> to the right of the building is a wooden sign reading HOSTILE in large red letters with a line crossing it off and the word HOSTILE written above it. A faint sound of shouting and commotion spills slightly from the slightly open- or spills from the slightly open door. Also, I think somebody has- it is Gideon. Gideon, you have a little bit of feedback? Did I? Might. Just uh, a it's, tad. Not happening, it's not happening all the time, it's just a tad. But yes, you okay. see all that before you. Do you have the ability to put your, uh, I was going to say, do you have the ability to put yourself on push to talk, my guy? That might fix it. No, I don't. But right. I can mute in between, that's not a problem. Uh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, so Eugene says, he looks at the side and he's like, That, that says hostile. hostile! No, it says hostile! hostile. No! That's a heck of a typo. No. Mm hmm. No, he, he like, he like motions Calamity over. Yeah? He like points and he's like, It says hostile! He's gonna point at the correction. Hostile! As in angry! Hostile. Eugene, some clown probably made the sign and he didn't know how to spell, and then someone corrected him. Can we just go in? You want to rest? This is the place to rest. Eugene stares at Gideon, and he's like, he and he and he like mouths the words "not safe," <laughs> very bad. Olive goes inside the hostel. Eugene, you're being awfully hostile right now. May is looking for some gum. May is looking for some gum to add to the wall. <laughs> Olive has um, already gone inside. I assume She's May carries some uh, sweets on them. Okay. She pulls one out of her pocket. She's chewing. She offers it to everyone else. <gasps> oh, Eugene, don't mind if I do. Eugene just shakes his head. Um, I would just politely decline. And Olive, I did get you going inside. I'll take care of that in just a sec. She'll take the um, the gum, right? But then you see that yeah. she feeds it through her eye, like she, like the eye of her mask. Like she refuses to take the bottom part off. So she just um, like plunks it through the eye hole of her mask. Yeah. <laughs> May thinks that this is some kind of custom. <laughs> and also feeds it through the top of her mask. Y Eugene just squints at the both of them. Is like, all right, I'm I'm going inside. The uh, the the deer lady already went through. Okay, as the party follows Olive in, you step into a dim lobby lit by lanterns turned to their lowest setting. The purple velvet carpeted floor is covered in smashed candy and remnants of costumes left behind by former residents. Behind a wooden counter is a marionette with a white ceramic face, short, dark hair that curls under her chin. The marionette clutches her head and cries, Please, make it stop! I can't take it anymore! I can't take any more guests until you make it stop! A shrieking and howling emits from somewhere in the hostel, Help! I can't get out of here! Okay. And you hear a loud pounding sound. It's been happening a little bit. Uh... Eugene is just gonna like like walk up cause like it's time to be big man you know he's like we're doing yeah. stuff uh Eugene's gonna be like um 
like tap on the counter and be like, uh, ma'am? Um, she takes her hands from her head and immediately snaps to attention with uh, a, a smile on her painted face. Oh, hello. Welcome to the hostel. Did I ask your name yet? No, you didn't. I just got here. Hi, I'm Ramona Ramble, Ramble Rumper. What's your name? Eugene Smithson. Eugene. Okay. And she yeah. writes that, she starts to write that down and goes, can you, can you spell that for me? Uh, E-U-G-E-N-E. -E and I got Smithson, right? Smith as in the metal worker? Yes, my my father was a he, he made swords. Okay. And she writes it down. Right. So, uh, what was I saying? Oh, right. Did you need anything? Uh, well, I was more thinking of what you needed. I mean, you were clawing at your face. She like tucks her pencil up into her like wooden ear, um, just under her hairline. And goes, was I? Well, yes. Um, you were saying something about m make it stop, and that you wouldn't take any more guests. And well, we kind of want to take a room, and you know, have a sit down. And if you're not taking any more guests until it stops, well, we we, we want to be guests. So. Oh, okay. Well, hold on. Let me. Think, let me think. And she likes you can see she's flipping through that notebook she's writing in, and you can see just written on every page all over the place are notes. A lot of them are just one word, very vague reminders. Right, the ghost! There's a ghost! It's constantly yelling about needing to get out, but I don't know where it is. Alright, well, um, I'm a paladin, so we could exercise it for or I could exercise it for you. You could get rid of the ghost? Why would you exercise a ghost? I, th I mean, they don't really need to be in shape. No, exercise is, like, make it go away. Like, politely ask it to be gone. I would also leave if somebody tried to make me exercise. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we want to have a room. And if we do this, we can get a room, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. So, where was the ghost the last time you saw it? Or have you seen it? Or I haven't seen it. I mean, there's another ghost. Uh, Gertrude. Um, but I mean, she's a good ghost. Not a bad ghost. So there are two ghosts. Yes, one's good, one's bad. Uh, Eugene squints. Okay. And he, he, he looks at Gideon. He's like, uh, Gideon, do you have any way to, like, look for ghosts? One minute, Eugene, let me let me get it going, and I'll see if we can do something to get to talking to them. So I will try to use Eyes of the Grave. As an action, you know the location of any undead within 60 feet of you that isn't behind total cover, and that isn't protected from divination magic until the end of your next turn. You can use this feature four times per long rest. Okay. So can I locate this ghost? You tap into that extra sense you have given to you by the Raven Queen. And looking around, you don't see any ghosts. Eugene kind of Can I do an insight check to see if this woman is lying? Absolutely. Or if, or if she, not necessarily lying, but maybe imagining it. Absolutely. Uh, 16. As far as you can tell, she's being completely honest. Um, and it's it's very troubling her. And you did just hear a voice yelling to let them out. Now, this doesn't give me a time frame on how long. Uh, I this is really, until the... Until your next turn is when Eyes of the Grave Oh, ends. yeah. So six yeah. seconds, right? Yep. So could I try to travel as far as I could in six seconds? And yeah. which would probably be my walking speed, right? Yep. And try to see if I can get a connection from them there. Yeah. So you come to the entrance of a long hallway with a lot of doors in it. And these doors are all very fanciful. Um, 
very very unique each one um and that's about where you get to before it ends but even looking down that hallway nothing comes up as undead and then eugene kind of leans over and he's like well what'd you see i'm not getting anything if there's a ghost here, it is far beyond my range capabilities probably, of being able to find it. It's probably hiding in one of the rooms. I could, oh. I could give you the keys and you could search the rooms for me. Yeah! You couldn't have told this to us prior. Well, you said that you'd be able to find it. I didn't say I would be able to, I said I would try to. I wanted to let you try first. I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Everybody's having a good time here, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> a fantastic time. Now, you said something about keys? Yes, and she takes out a large box. Um, within the box, you find a gray space helmet, a rattling noisemaker, a selection of yellow tickets and a single blue ticket, a large garter snake, a lever with an anchor stamped onto it, an axe, and a brass key. Here you go. Thank you. Eugene looks down. These are keys? Yes. I only see one key in here. No, those are all keys. Eugene takes out the key key. Yep. He's like... That's, you, you see, like, the wood twists on her face. And she, like, makes the Excalibur face from uh, Soul Eater. Mm-hmm. Um, like... <laughs> When, when, when anybody mentions Excalibur around somebody who knows what Excalibur is, and they make that, like, very disgruntled, upset face. Yeah, and he says... That's that's the boring room. Eugene's face lights up at the word boring. <laughs> what do you mean by boring? <laughs> I mean it's boring. No one likes it. But how is it boring? It's just boring. I mean, why stay in a normal... Like tavern room, when you have all the other options and the whole the Revelia to you. E Eugene just smiles. He's like, "Can I keep this one? I mean, to like, to like stay in? Uh, we can discuss it your arrangements after you get rid of the ghost. No, this is the one I want." Eugene, she's not gonna give us a room unless we get rid of the stupid well, ghost. We'll can get we go get rid of the ghost and then we can get a room? I'm saying we'll and get if rid you of want the, the boring room, we'll get the boring room. Okay. Put the boring room on hold for one Eugene Smithson and friends. Okay, uh, I will do. And she, like, opens up the notebook to uh, a, a fairly-ish clean piece. You can see there's a spot to write down. And she looks around. Hey, have you seen where I put my pencil? Uh, it's behind your ear. Oh, thank you. And she takes it and writes that down. Mayworth is, like, rummaging through the box while all of this is going on. Hey, don't, don't lose anything, please. <laughs> um, she starts, like, like, stuffing all of the keys into her pockets. <laughs> A lot of these will not fit. <laughs> She's like, just... Can I take the box? Yeah, you can take the box, absolutely. Okay, whatever I can't put into my pockets, I just take the box. <laughs> okay, um, you take the box. In fact, I think the only key you could have fit in your pocket that or keys that you could fit into your pocket that wasn't what uh eugene had picked up are the garter snake and the uh different colored tickets this carter snakes looks so familiar to me <laughs> it's almost like in another timeline <laughs> almost <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> Should I roll to become friends with the garter snake? I feel like <laughs> Look, I feel you, like that's the only fair. No, I. It was you're still playing Mayworth, and it was very Mayworth to immediately become friends with the garter snake. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure it was all kosher because I definitely want to do that again. Yeah, it's it's not it's not um, meta gaming if it's just just in character. Okay, cool. Yep. Universe consistence. <laughs> yep, it's a universal constant that Mayworth befriends the Garter Snake. He's just it, so cute. And eventually gives it arms. <laughs> we, have, we have to do that again. Hello, oh my gosh. Betty Wop, man. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I have befriended this snake. <laughs> um, absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely chilling with you right now. Um, so you have a whole list of keys here. Um, now you can, of course, go at this in a random order. Or you can do it in the order that's in the book and not make it extra work on me. Would you like <laughs> us to go in the order that's in the book? Where's Ian? the order it is? Right, let's, let's, let's I'm going to I'm gonna turn to the rest of the group and I'm going to be like, let me just feel which key seems right. And I'm going to like <laughs> rummage around. <laughs> just only holding the snake. Okay, uh, the first thing your hand hits is a gray spacesuit helmet. Amazing. I turn to the rest of the group and I'm like, oh, this is, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it looks like a bucket of some kind. It's, do you put, is it a purse? And I try to make it a purse. <laughs> it's a hell. Um, yeah, Ramona shakes her head and goes, no, it goes on your head. Also, you're definitely going to need more. And she pulls out enough for each per person in the party. Okay. Uh, Eugene's gonna stick it on his head over his helmet. Okay. That, so now just to keep it. Um, how big are these helmets? Um, they seem to resize. Like when you watched Eugene put it over his helmet, okay. you watched it like expand and shrink a little bit. That's what I was gonna say because I have antlers. Yep. I was also about to say I have antlers. <laughs> It's form fitting. <laughs> I love the idea that this helmet just expands a long way, so it's just a big <laughs> tube on top of your head. Oh my god, what if it made me look like a. Uh, uh, oh shit, thing from Alien. Thing from Alien. Oh, a xenomorph. Xenomorph! <laughs> yeah. I'm imagining that, like, like, it doesn't, like, make, like, a full size, it just forms to the shape of our antlers and horns. So it yep. looks like our, our antlers are just like covered in like the shiny material. <laughs> yep, absolutely. <laughs> oh, y'all yeah, look at right uh, just, just a note. <laughs> so Monocle, the mask and the helmet on right now. Does, um, <laughs> does the snake have a tiny helmet? <laughs> yes, there's enough helmets for everyone, including oh. the snake. Amazing. He gets a tiny little helmet. The uh, helmet see through, like the yeah, face the mask part. Yeah. Yep. But it's see through, so I have to leave the mask on too. Uh, you don't have to leave the mask on. You do also have the helmet on. So if there is any schnozlings, they're not going to get to you, but everybody will be able to see your permanent scowl. Yeah, I'll leave the mask on. Okay. <laughs> um. Once you all have your helmets on, Ramona points you down the hallway um, and goes, uh, so this is going to be your first room on the right. You're just going to go, all right, uh, Gideon, uh, I think we should take point. May tries the handle. You want me to take the lead because you just don't want to be up front. Yeah, no. Nope. Fine, you Eugene. I have run it. Off. Yeah, I imagine <laughs> Olive is right behind her because she's already yep. been in this this hostel before. Yep. So you know, me and Olive two, run off to the door. Actually, does you two Olive slow know? down? <laughs> no, does Olive does. know any of these rooms? Has she been yeah. in any of them? Um, or pick? Do you remember the rooms? Ah, uh, I remember one shot? some of them. Pick I two. Was, I was gonna say that she would be in. She would have gone to the jungle room specifically yep. because of Feywild stuff. Because yes, absolutely. You know, even though she wanted out, she misses a little bit of home. Um. And oh, actually, I don't know. Probably the game room. Okay, so you've been in the game show room, and the jungle room. I love the game show room. Yes. That's my favorite. Yeah, I, I figured um, Olive would also enjoy it a little bit. The game sh show room and the underwater room are my hands down favorites. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys approach the space room. Um, as you get close, a uh, red light scans over the whole party, uh, starting from the top down. Very science fiction-y. And there's no handle on the door. It's just like a circle of metal. Um, think very much to like Star Trek doors. Uh -huh. um, it scans the party, realizes that everybody is indeed wearing a helmet, 
and then it slides open with a whoosh of air, and you hear a tiny voice. Ooh. Decodification completed. Full fun throttles engaged. Helmets may be removed. What's a throttle? Uh, All I heard was fun. Hands and neck? But fun, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um, if we're gonna <laughs> come in, keeping okay. the helmet on for the bit. Okay. The room is I circular. like how I look in this helmet, so I'm gonna keep mine on too. Okay. Uh, this room is circular, with pitch black walls, floors, and ceilings, punctuated by stars and galaxies that occasionally appear on the walls, bringing some light into the room. Some of the stars form a constellation, mimicking one of Hecna's posters, his face just as animated in the stars as on the parchment. The room lacks gravity, so anybody who comes inside will be floating. Yeah, Eugene looks a little taken aback by that for a moment. He's like, but my feet aren't sticking to the ground. This is weird. All of this upside down. <laughs> Fog would be like scrambling to like claw at the floor mm -hmm. to be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know the like the doggy paddle that dogs do? She's doing that with her like <gasps> her deer legs just trying to swim <laughs> through the <laughs> Just Look at all these Gideon's amateurs just... haven't flown before. <laughs> Gideon's just sitting there with his arms crossed. Just, just... slowly drifting. Yep. <laughs> May is having the time of her life. She's like, whoa! Gideon A Gideon. little nauseous, but whoa! <laughs> Gideon, you said your passive perception's a 16? Yes. You notice one of the constellations are not made of light. And then, as you're staring at it a little bit more, trying to make out, what is that? Is that... Is that popcorn? Make me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, god. Well, should we send you our, like, our passives and, like, our languages that we know? Yes, please. Okay. I had meant oh, to ask for that yeah. before, and then I kept on forgetting. Do you want yeah, us no. to just DM that, or put it in a character discussion? Um, either one. I'll be able to find them either way. Sounds good. Yeah, that uh, wisdom was a no. Seven. Oh boy. You guys watch as Gideon, oh. arms crossed, something catches his eye and he stares at it for a moment. And then he rips off his helmet, brings the mask down from his face, and like makes swimming motions, but he's already pretty close. Calamity, it's too late. You can't stop it, but you know what this oh, is. Shit. And you watch as he grabs handfuls, like, just scoops out of the air, popcorn, and shoves it into his mouth. Um... Okay, so, question. What is this? Uh, this is called a popcorn swarm. They are living creatures. And they mm -hmm. convince people, through some kind of magic, to eat them. Usually, to the detriment of the eater. Um... Mm. Gideon. Let's see... Is it too late to try and, like, Heimlich maneuver, force this man to vomit? Um, unfortunately, you won't be able to get to him because your movement right. speed is reduced while in this room. Right. Um, so Gideon, go ahead and roll me a d6 and tell me what you got. D6? Yep. A four. A four. You feel your legs and arms just lock up. And you guys watch as Gideon just, after eating the popcorn, like, you can just see the, the personality flood back in. And his scowl comes back, a little bit of confusion, probably. And then his arms lock out into, like, a T-pose. And his legs lock straight out as well as his limbs completely lock up. And he's now T-posing, slowly floating through space. What the hell is this? <laughs> um, um, she's doing that, but at this point, she's just sort of floating along Gideon to keep an eye. Let's keep our eyes eye level, okay, everybody? <laughs> Found lady, what's going on? What was that? Yeah. Um, question. I don't know if I would know this, but is it safe to assume that the, um... Techna constellation can also hear as well. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, so she just gives um, little finger guns and then a wink. Oh, just some good old-fashioned fun, right, everybody? Oh, that's so silly. You'll oh, be this fine. Is the time Don't worry of my about life. it. May gives finger guns back. <gasps> mm -hmm. Laser oh, space. What Gideon's doing is just starts T-posing while she's like oh, upside no. down. <laughs> yes. making them. Everybody starts T-posing and making microwave noises. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my god. Honestly, I'm just picturing Fog just bringing his limbs together and just kind of like casually floating around in a circle. Mm -hmm. He's just given up that ground is no longer a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna look around. Can I roll for if um May notices something's off about this? Yeah, absolutely. All right. What would that be? Perception? Yeah, go ahead and roll me another perception. Okay. Um, that's 16. Okay. With a 16, you notice another constellation that stands out. It appears to be Ramona's handwriting. And you can see, written in the stars, a constellation that reads Scooter. Hmm. Okay, so Eugene, he like he's like looking around, and he he's got his sword out, and he's like stabbed it into the ground, uh, and he's like holding on to it, you know, like an anchor. Mm -hmm. He's like, aren't we supposed to be looking for something? Anyone know what a what who a scooter is? Anyone know what a what's a scooter? Who's a scooter? Is a scooter a name? I mean, you think you've heard Scooter before, but you're, you're mm. it's its a distant memory. Mm. It feels like back of brain feeling. Ah, okay. Uh, she is just making these sounds. I need it to be known. <laughs> sort of does a little thinking tap, tap, tap against her own little thing. Um, is there, will what happened to Gideon wear off at all? Yes, um, in fact, okay. uh, it's not long before Gideon, you start to get feeling back in your arms and legs, and they feel tired. <clears throat> Gideon gained one point of exhaustion. Oh no. Conditions. Okay. Um, I'm going to, May's going to kind of you know, she's attracted to shiny things, so she's going to, like, kind of float up to the wall and start to touch the stars, the constellations. Okay. Um, you do so, and they're slightly warm to the touch. But, um, other than that, I mean, they're, they're flush with the wall. You don't feel any difference except for the warmth. Yup, that's a wall. <laughs> Does anybody? You, you know what? I'm just gonna look myself. And Eugene looks around for anything yeah. like, like uh, useful, I guess. Ghost like? <sighs> I don't know. He's looking. Um, looking around, you will only be able to reconfirm what Mayworth had previously seen, which is the constellation in Ramona's handwriting, spelling out Scooter. And uh, there's nothing else in this room. Aside from you guys floating around. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like there's anything else here. And usually the ghosts that I've read about, if it was here, we'd be able to see it somewhat at least. I'm trying out the word scooter in different accents to see if something <laughs> unlocks. Yeah. I'm like, scooter! Scooter! <laughs> Can you, do, can you do that one again? Can you do, maybe that'll help me jog my memory. Scooter, scooter, scooter. Um, no. When she does the when she does the really high pitched one, do you remember Pinky saying scooter before? Ah, wait, 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 wait. Pinky knows scooter, I think. Wait, is it? But is it like a scooter vroom vroom or is it like... 
Uh, a scooter I'll vroom figure vroom? it out. Is that a na can, what are you can talking you about? talk to Pinky from inside of here? <laughs> no, she's long gone by now. She doesn't stop. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, May takes out her notebook and writes down scooter. And that's about it. Okay. Alrighty. Um. And you, Eugene's gonna say, I, I think, I, I think our time in this room is spent, don't you? Is the door still open? Yes. Eugene's just gonna make a swim for the door. <laughs> okay. Um, May's gonna do one last trick and follow. Okay. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's like difficult to move in here, but it's not too difficult. You only move at half speed here. Mm -hmm. Um, so you all are able to leave. Um, cool. Again, Gideon, the muscles in your arms and legs, they were f at full tension for the entire time you were stuck T posing. So they, they're, they're feeling a little rough right now. Um, but you guys are able to leave that room with the clue of the name Scooter. Is it a person? Is it a place? Is it a thing? You're not sure. Um, I'm like, well, that's a bust, and I hover my hand in the box again. Okay. This time you grab onto the rattling noisemaker. And there's a few of those in there. It seems uh. to be another group thing. I immediately start passing them out, and I start using mine right away. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a funky beat. As you rattle the noisemaker, uh, the second room on the right, you can see that there's a little bit of um, light bulbs that circle the door. And as you make that noise, it starts to light up some light bulbs near the bottom. I, um... I'm going to look to um, Eugene and Gideon, and I'm going to demonstrate how the noisemaker works. <laughs> Flight attendant style. Yeah, I'm going to be like, okay, so this is a noisemaker. <laughs> and I start <laughs> twirling like it around. Mouth. Thank you for noticing, Gideon. Good job. <laughs> I wave it in his face, face a little bit more. I'd reach out and try to grab it from her. I just change out his with mine. I'm like, oh, you want to switch? Oh, and I change it out. <laughs> May, I learned how to wield a sword for seven years. I can use a noisemaker, but thank you. And I'm like, okay, so then use it. Ah. I'm like, it's time. And you, One, I was two, start shaking three. it as well. Eugene okay. like twirls it. Yeah. Is there anyone who doesn't try to use their noisemaker? Mm, I think we all. Well, yeah, I, I was do, gonna say, if Gideon's doing it, I'm sure everyone is. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least attempting to. Gideon use just it. wants to go and let these people rest and stop dealing with this bullshit. That's fair. If it looks like Fog is having trouble, Calamity will start using hers with one hand and also try to help him by, like, holding his wrist. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> like you would have child. That is so great. <laughs> with your party all combined, you can get the door to open up. All the lights turn on, circling the entire door, and then it opens up. Within, you see a 20 foot by 20 foot room, decorated with colorful banners and filled with dozens of party balloons each with Hecna's animated face on them. Um, you know, Calamity, that every single one of these balloons act as if they're a Hecna poster. Mm -hmm. <gasps> How wonderful, everybody! <laughs> dead center of the room is uh, some really precarious-looking bunk beds. If you've ever seen Ruby, the bunk beds they have in that are a good description mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Like, these things should not support human weight, and there's about six of them stacked on top of each other. Um, each bed only has about a few feet of height to accommodate a single person. 
I'm gonna climb that bunk bed. <laughs> I think I'll stay out of this room. G Gideon, you're the one who can see ghosts. We gotta, we gotta do it, man. <sighs> this room. I don't have to be on the eyes. I don't space? have to be in the room. How big is the room? Twenty foot by twenty foot. Okay. I don't so... have to be in the room to see if there's a ghost there. So Eugene is gonna like. I will stay at the door. Eugene's gonna like step back. And he's gonna be like, listen. How big is the doorway, Jasket? Um, it's big enough to accommodate you if you ducked a little bit. But width-wise, it's the width of a door, right? Yeah. Okay, Gideon's uh, getting pushed in by fogs and antlers. <laughs> <laughs> how uh, how much space is between like the ceiling and the first bunk? That's mm -hmm. like, is there enough room for me to leap and jump on top of it? Um, or attempt like, to jump I on say. top of the bunk that's just under the ceiling. Yeah, like try to get to the very top it's, and like it's jump. It's a pretty high jump. Okay, well I have a thing called mirthful leaps. Where what it says whenever I make a long or high jump, I can roll a d8 and add the number rolled to the number of feet that I can cover. <laughs> Jesus, Crimbo! <laughs> I'm a deer, all right. She go ahead jumping, and roll though. me. Go ahead and roll <laughs> me that d8 jumping. and tell me what you get. Oh my god! Wait, hold on. I put. I didn't. Oh my god! I didn't bring out my d8. I need my d8. Okay. Yeah, this is a d8. Right? Yeah. That reminds me, uh, Beyonce is getting into D and D, and so I'm gonna be making a helpful little chart for her because she she has trouble differentiating what dice is what. Where I'm just gonna put circles on a piece of paper, and label it like D12, D8, and then put those dice into the circles. <laughs> nice. I mean, that would help. Yeah. Uh, I got seven, so I can cover an additional seven feet. Yeah. From with, with a additional seven feet on top of your normal jump, I'm going to say you don't need to roll for it. Thematically, it's more fun if you can. Um, and you just straight leap. Like, you don't even get a running start. Oh, yeah. You just bounce into the air. I look at this. It says, um, uh, you cover a number of feet up to your strength score. Ten feet on foot immediately before the jump. So if I got a running start, I could add my strength score to this as well. That's terrible. Mayworth, you start or... climbing the beds and you like watch a blur of movement shoot by you. And then you look <laughs> up and Olive is already on the top bunk. Oh my god, I also just looked at high jump too. Yep. I mean, I'm like, like high jump, <laughs> you leap into the air a number of feet equal to three plus your strength modifier. Yeah. Just why? <laughs> Maze imagine... like it. She just it's runs, you. and then right at the edge of the, the bunk bed, she just bounces up like a cat. <laughs> yeah. So, Eugene is just going to kind of like pull Gideon to the side as they're doing this. He's going to be like, look, sir, look, I don't like this either. Like, not very much, but we need your expertise. Okay, I need your expertise. So, you're a much bigger man than me, so could you like... I don't know, respectfully suck it up and go in the room. <laughs> um, Gideon didn't get a choice. He was, uh, I was yeah, Gideon, Gideon. Gideon got I pushed had, I had to go to the, fog. Yeah, I was going to push back against fog. I know it's probably going to be something I lose anyway. I only have a strength of 12. Let's have, but it's like... Let's have an athletics versus athletics roll. Okay. Sounds good to me. Uh, Fog, you have the size difference here. You can have advantage. Oh, I rolled a 20. <laughs> Dirty 20. Nice. You said acrobatics, right? Uh, athletics. Athletics. Okay, sorry. Okay, so my first roll was a 7, and my next roll was a 12. I had to double check. Uh, okay, is that 12 total? 14. 14? Okay. So, it's not that you don't shove Gideon, it's that you don't shove Gideon in. Um, instead, you shove him towards Eugene, and you get inside. Okay. May is trying to talk Olive into making a fort at the top of the bunk. <laughs> 
It's like ripping like are there like sheets yeah. and stuff up here? Like there's sheets and blankets. Can I hear them in there yep. doing all this? Yep. Out of frustration, Gideon would walk in and be like, What are you two doing? Uh <laughs> making a fun. fort? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You should I'm try like, it. Putting pillows up home? for walls. <laughs> Do you live here? Oh. Do you pay the rent, child? <laughs> he really is just a dad. Uh, e Eugene rolls his eyes, kind of. He's going to be looking around the room for anything pertaining to ghosts. Okay. You start looking now around. That Gideon, now that Gideon's in here, he'll cast his eyes of the grave. Okay. No signs of a ghost, but... In the distance, you hear clapping. Um, anyone who has been at a restaurant when it's somebody's birthday and they do that line of clapping, that is what you hear. <laughs> Mr. Gideon, I don't want to be at Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> um, shit. Um, immediately, we are copying that um, little clap. Just very snap routine, you know what I mean? Yep. I am also joining in. And louder. <laughs> I'm joining in from behind in my bunk. <laughs> in and my then, fort. A line Sorry, of leveling. Led by a large, I mean like, they, they could probably look fog in the eyes without looking up. Clown. Walks inside. The clown is holding a massive cake. Um, and they are singing a song. Smorky Porg nods for you. Smorky Porg nods for you. Smorky Porg nods nice scooter. Smorky Porg nods for you. And then they put the cake down on one of the empty bunks. Uh, um, none of us are... Did you say scooter? The clown... Nods and then turns to go leave. Yeah, she just sort of smiles and she, you know, she's sort of humming along with. She sort of, um, for a moment, you almost think, Eugene, that there is like a fucking shut up, um, glare behind the mask, but it's so quickly gone. <laughs> then the clown stops as it like processes what you said and turns slowly back to you, Eugene. Yeah. So, uh, None of your scooter. Um. He like looks at calamity. Thank you for the birthday party. It was so wonderful. Wasn't this great, guys? Wasn't this such a fun time? Yeah, oh, it was a joyful <laughs> surprise. <laughs> uh huh. He narrows his eyes at calamity. What? Looks you don't like a bit of fun? Um, it is, it is fair to note that the smile never falters despite the narrowing mm -hmm. of the eyes. You know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's enjoy this festivity. Yeah. Come yeah, on, come on. Yeah, totally. Woo. <laughs> and he leaves. Eugene, like, releases a pent-up breath. You know, you could really stand to learn the power of yes and. Ada? And she does like a funny little nudge. Um, Eugene, like, just, he, he, he just looks awkward right now. Like, <laughs> like he's just like, he's like, yes, and let's do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Eugene looks at the cake. Okay. It says happy birthday scooter on it. Scooter. Well, it's Scooter's birthday, I guess. Okay, so it's not the vroom vroom. Okay, okay. It's oh. not the what? The vroom vroom. The like, a, like a scooter. May overhears this and is like, hmm, Scooter, and opens her notebook and writes Scooter down. <laughs> Again. Um, thinking... She's trying to remember the last time she hung out with Pinky. Um, she's oh, well, it's a person at least. <gasps> oh, must be a rube or maybe a reveler. Reveler, 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 reveler
Eugene uh, just like nods shakily, like, yeah. <laughs> Right. Oh, okay. Let me explain this. So a reveler is somebody who is joining in the festivities, somebody who works for the wonderful maestro in this wonderful revelia. A rube is somebody like yourself, and she's a little boop, um, who is not quite yet joining the festivities and is just a lovely patron for this lovely place. Hey, hey, beep. Yeah. So you touched Eugene's nose, right? Um. You did like a boot? Yeah. He feels cold. Ooh. Yeah. You just, you notice that. Just like, okay. you know, you've touched a, a, a humanoid nose before. Usually they're kind of warm, you know? Eugene's is like ice cold. Right. Yeah. Fun. Okay. Yeah. So you notice that. Um, and Eugene sure. goes, yeah, sure. I guess. Um. So... It doesn't look like Scooter's here. No! Wonder what happened to him. Oh, well. I mean, I guess there's a few things that could have happened to him. <laughs> so, maybe we go check the other rooms, then. Huh? Oh, well, sure. I mean, don't you want the cake, though? No, I'm not very much of a sweets person. May pops out of her, um, fort and is like, Maybe, <gasps> I be what? <gasps> Oh, well, there's a cake here. Maybe we should save it for Scooter once we find him. I'm going to jump down. It's up to you, though. I don't think he's going to well, miss it. You have that weird go. fold stuff away in nowhere thing, don't you? She sort of tilts her head like she's thinking. Well, I'm saying you the could map. take it if you wanted to. You did it with the map. <gasps> so, Clara, oh, you know... Yeah. That you could feasibly put it in there, but doing so is going to get cake over every other item in there. She thinks about it, and she thinks about it really hard. And then she's sort of like... She's going to pull Matthew out. Okay. She's going to unfold him into a mouth. Are you hungry? Uh, no. Okay. And then folds him back in. <laughs> He to, like, I don't continue. think I you, can. You pulled him up too too fast. <laughs> I don't think I can. He's not hungry, you know. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, if any of you guys want the cake, you can have some cake. I'm gonna go. May um, Fettuccini is moving towards the cake. Um. Okay, uh, do I, okay, do I notice anything weird or off about this cake? Does it look like regular cake? I'm it guessing. looks like regular cake to you. Okay, you can have a bite, why not? Okay. It's down at the bottom. Did you just, did you just ask if the cake is alive? <laughs> I asked if the cake looked like, was actually cake. Um, <laughs> so you watch a full grown garter snake Take a bite of cake and consume it. <laughs> um, it looks like he's really enjoying it, so I'm gonna have a little bite too. <laughs> like that, but down at the corner, so no one notices it. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. No. It's 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 a tasty, although sweet, even for a cake. It's real good. I like start um i'm like you have really good taste to fettuccine um and i turn to the rest of the group i want a piece eugene Ooh, is just standing near the door <laughs> maybe i'll save one for scooter i was just gonna just take just, like her finger and just like drag it through some of the icing <laughs> <laughs> and then lick it I like after you do that. I cut a piece to go, and I like wrap it in like I don't know some cloth that I have on me, yeah. and stick it in my pocket. Oh, God, sounds good. That's gonna be that's, a mess later. It's gonna be a smushed cake later, but oh yeah. Do you head on to the next room now? I would say so. Yeah, unless anybody, unless someone wants to stay here. Uh, I don't think anything is in here anymore. No. So, awesome. Um, May, you reach in and you pull out a handful of yellow tickets and a single blue ticket. Uh, 
I start handing out the tickets. Okay. Um. May I go ahead and roll me a d hundred. God. Because you're just handing these out okay. at random, right? Yeah. Okay. That's what. I don't have a d hundred. Can you roll one for me? I don't have. I was. Oh wait, no, I found one. I have um. Ninety. Ninety. Okay. I was putting you in the top ten percentile, so you literally landed in the top ten. You end up with the blue ticket. <laughs> Amazing. Um. As you walk up to this next door, you can see that um, it has a uh, a sign above it that says on air. Uh, it is not currently lit up. Um, there is a ticket booth built into the wall next to this door where you can see just a severed hand is sitting there with like a tiny little book uh, open and held open by its fingers. Um, as you guys approach, it closes the book and then grabs this little, like, um, visor hat and flips it up into the air to have it land on, t on the back of the hand. Uh, and sits there and waits for you guys to bring the tickets forward. I'm that you'll put in her ticket. Okay, it takes the ticket and, like, flops over onto its side, gives you a thumbs up, flops back onto the palm, grabs the hat, flips it up into the air, puts it back in the back of the hand. Uh, um, thumbs up. Eugene does the same thing. Uh, same motion. It flops over onto its side, giving you a thumbs up, flops back onto the palm, grabs the visor, throws it back up into the air, lands on the back of the hand. May does the same thing. I also want to kind of take a peek and see if I'm interested in his book. I might want one later. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, give me just a sec. It's a book about hand stretches. He wants to do yoga. <laughs> uh, the book is titled Gates of Crows. But crows can fly, May says in her head. <laughs> <laughs> And takes a step step back. Okay. Um, you guys all get in your tickets, and then the door opens. Inside, the room is another 20 foot by 20 foot square, and it is set up like a small set. There are two chairs placed atop a red rug with a bright spotlight above, with small rows of empty chairs set up to seat the audience. Um, anybody who had the yellow tickets, which is everyone but May, mm -hmm. they are audience members. Uh, you can see each chair has a little yellow ticket symbol on it. Um, except for the one in the middle of the spotlight where there's a blue ticket symbol. Uh, seated across from the blue ticket symbol chair, you can see a person just sitting there waiting patiently. Eugene's going to file into his seat and just sit down. Like, well, this is another thing we're doing, I guess. <laughs> May kind of like is on the spot, so she like fluffs her hair really quick, and she makes sure Fettuccine is looking good, and she's like getting ready to walk out. Okay. Um. Does everybody else sit down? Yes. Yes. I'm interested. Well, of course. Fog. Yes. <laughs> in what way do you sit down? Instead of sitting in the chair, he's just gonna sit on the floor, just kind of okay. like kind of like dog sit in a way yeah that's pretty much how he sits okay if you sit next to olive she will pat your head <laughs> then fog sits next to olive i am patting okay um mayworth you're seated across from a pale pale man um you can see two little tips of fangs pointing out from under his uh lips very like very stereotypical Hollywood vampire um, who upon you sitting down immediately looks up and goes hello I match his energy I'm like hello 
Oh! <laughs> it is wonderful to meet you. Um, it is wonderful to be here. Oh, so oh. glad to hear it. I'm Laird Bubble of Squeak. What a name, Laird. <laughs> Thank you. May I have yours? My name is Mayworth, and this is Fettuccini. I point to, point to him, and I'm like, you may have heard of me. <laughs> I have not, but I'm sure plenty will after this day. And he gestures backwards, and you can see like a little floating device behind him. Um, which you as a character wouldn't recognize, but you as a player, it's a floating camera. Like a whole ass TV oh. camera. <laughs> I kind of like glance at what he's pointing at, and I'm like, yeah, I have no clue why he's <laughs> excited about it. Um, just as a note, by the way, the rest of the room uh, is mostly empty, except where you can see a few Hecna posters uh, scattered throughout. So there is no corner unseen. Um, he like fumbles a bit with his stack of cards and then taps them against his leg to get them back in order. So we're gonna just hop right into this if you don't mind. Uh, this is a little game show. I'm gonna ask you some questions. You're gonna answer them. If you get them correct, you get a reward at the end. If you get them wrong, well, don't get them wrong. Uh, amazing. And I like look to the group and I'm like, it's cool, guys. Don't worry. And I like, look back to him. Eugene just How far worried. away from the stage are we? Uh, you guys are not far, like maybe like 10 feet. Okay. Yeah, Eugene has seen the vampire and he is currently on high alert. Yep. Okay, first question. Okay. And he like leans in. The light above you focuses in, only illuminating the two of you now. Some very dramatic background music starts to play. The tension I, of the room heightens. I lean in as well. I match the energy. I'm ready. How old were you when you ate your first popsicle? <laughs> what is a popsicle? <laughs> He like leans back, he stares you down, his eyes narrow, he looks at his card, he looks back up at you. Looks back at his card, he looks back at you. Yes, and he throws the card off to the side. I like hop up, I, like I take a bow, I sit back down. <laughs> Next question. Enthusiastic then... clapping. He gives time for the clap and the applause. Yeah, the rest and of us then... are like golf clapping, or Eugene is. <laughs> He nods, and then the light narrows in, and he leans in again. What is the average flight speed of an unladen swallow? <laughs> A what? An unladen swallow. Average flight speed of an unladen swallow. African or European? <laughs> <laughs> Give it a coconut. <laughs> um... Do I hear their suggestions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I kind of, I like hear them and I kind of repeat them back. I'm like, uh, America, uh is it a European swallow? <laughs> Does it have a coconut? He pauses, looks at his card again, looks back up at you very dubiously. Shakes his head a little bit and then you hear a chime. And he throws the card off to the side. And I like give a thumbs up. <laughs> I give a thumbs up. I'm like, yeah, guys. <laughs> okay, next question. What is one color you would banish from the rainbow and why? Mm -hmm. uh, she thinks for like a very long moment and. She, um, says, well, I think that I would get rid of purple. It's just, there's something about it. it's too purple. He glares you down. Looks at his card. Looks back up, back up at you. Correct! And throws that card to the side. He's only got one card left in his hand. 
Okay. Amazing. Final question. Are you having fun? I am having a great time. May has also, just a side note, May has never felt better than <laughs> she does right now. She thinks that this is probably the best day. Wonderful. And he throws the card to the side and claps. You've won! Good job. Yeah! Uh, and he I... gets up, reaches behind his seat, and very similar to Calamity, just pulls something out of the space that shouldn't be there. Um, and it's just a massive, like, novelty size, like, just bigger than a person, uh, check for one red ticket. Um, May is losing her mind. Have you, if you've seen anyone win a game show, the tears, yeah. the falling down, she's doing all of that. She's very shaky right now. She's, like, looking <laughs> to her friends. She says, oh my god, I, I want to think, I want to think Calamity, and ah! Eugene, and Gideon. <laughs> I go through the entire list. Yeah, it's fantastic, I'm sure. He then reaches into the same hammer space and pulls out another one of these. You can see this one is signed off to a person named Scooter. He goes, and if you don't mind, uh, I personally can't leave the room. Uh, but Scooter had peeked his head in here about, a, would say, a week ago. Said he's trying out all the different rooms. Um... Haven't heard from him since. He never picked up his tickets. Oh. So if you don't mind getting this to him if you see him. Um, I take the ticket. I'm like, oh my gosh. Scooter rings a bell. I'm not really sure, like, exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> I do open up my notebook. I see that I've written it down twice. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I tuck it away as well. Y Eugene okay. has stood up. Uh, Scooter's the person we're looking for, May. Eh? I turn to him, I'm like, Eugene, this is really, this is my moment. I think that you should just be happy for me. Look at this ticket. I said thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> May, have your moment, and then we have to move on. We have to find Scooter in this cake, remember? If we find Scooter, you can have some cake. May, I've started to bow. As you guys go to leave the room, uh, Laird uh, lets you know that he's going to retire to the backstage. He just picks up his chair, goes to the far corner of the room, sits it into the corner, and then sits there staring blankly at the wall. Um, but as you guys leave the room, you can hear outside oh, now. Oh, that's so familiar. <laughs> you can hear outside now, cheering, and some people chanting May. <laughs> I have to go see my people! <laughs> no, we have to find Oh, I'm Scooter. gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. Uh, so... I'm not going to lie, by the way. Absolutely love that May got it again. But I know Gideon answer the questions would have been fucking hilarious. Oh, oh my god. god. So good. I, so, I would have died. I would have ended up dead. Especially, like, the, what was it? The <laughs> vowel one? Yep. Or which, which, I can't remember if it was actually the vowels or not. I did. Not... I skipped the vowel one, but I, I do really like the vowel one. It's the, uh, if you replaced each vowel in your name with oob, what would your name be? <laughs> <laughs> it still hurts my brain. Like I can't do it right off of my like the top of my head. Um, doing Ood. name was so bad. Ood. Ood oh, yeah. By the way, if you answer the um what what is one color you'd banish from the rainbow question, and then answer the are you having fun question with anything but yes, uh, you get slimed and you can no longer see that color. Oh. Well, my wow. answer to the, the rainbow question would have been the entire rainbow. <laughs> you would have been <laughs> colorblind. I feel like Gideon would have loved to be colorblind. He's yeah. like, yes, this fits, this oh, fits yeah. me. It, yeah, it would make it a lot better. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I yeah. have to see my people. I rush hey, out. You rush outside. You leave the whole hostel. Ramona looks a little confused as you just rush by. Outside, you can see that there's a large blimp with a screen on it, and you can see the wrapping up of your little game show. And I have my pin at the ready. <laughs> yeah, and uh, go ahead and make me a performance check. Uh, can I say Calamity is there working as a very comedic version of a, like, PR agent? Like a, yeah. so you know, like a that, talent star? Make that performance check with advantage. Uh, 
That's a dirty 20. Okay, awesome. You sign all kinds of things for the next, like, five, ten minutes. Unless somebody wants to come and stop her. No, I'm, I'm just going to be like, look, listen, if we just let her have her moment, she'll be sated and we can go do what we need to do. <laughs> um. Okay, cool. So for the next five, ten minutes, you're, you're signing papers, you're signing, like, little bags of popcorn, you're signing body parts that you never thought you would be signing, you kiss what you think are babies but are not. <laughs> Um, I'm having the time of my life. Absolutely. I, I turn to the group. I'm like, you gotta try this. Um, and you see riding up to you on a unicycle, <gasps> Pinky. <gasps> Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I saw the show. You were amazing. You're a natural here. <gasps> Um, May has blushed a little bit and has done a, like, tiny curtsy. That's high compliment coming from Pinky. Oh, thank you, Clamity. <laughs> Say, do you know who Scooter is? Yeah, uh, a gnome fella. Um, <gasps> oh. man, I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah? Yeah, What like... was it, what was it your guy was saying, Mayworth? Um, are you talking about? Just now. A With no? Tickets. Yeah. Oh. Something about scooter. Yeah, hmm. we were looking for a scooter. Was he here? Do you know? I I, I haven't seen him in like a couple weeks. I don't know. Blue Valley is a big place. Easy to lose people. More than, more than ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> Same brain. Guns. <laughs> she returns the finger guns. Well, I have to go back. Um, Maybe joins in with the finger guns. <laughs> a Mexican standoff of finger guns. It's like that scene from The <laughs> Office. Yeah, they're like. <laughs> okay. Well, I would love to talk more, get to know you all, and honestly, always a pleasure to see you, Calamity. But <laughs> I was in the middle of doing a thing, uh, and I have to get back to that. Bye. Have fun. I hope I can see you again soon. And she Always! Never too far away around. from you! Oh, I sure again. hope not! And then she leaves. <laughs> She's great. She's amazing! Right? Eugene's I am blushing. The hostel. Mm -hmm. He's just gonna like poke his head out. Are you guys done yet? I mean, not to be like rude, but we kind of need to go find this guy. Yeah, May, it doesn't look like you've down. signed all the things you're going to be signing. I also, like, lean over to offer to sign Eugene's armor as I'm walking back in. I'm like, uh, oh? I'm just going to polish it away later, so you probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And I mentioned, I'm like, hey, did, so, Gooder, he's a gnome. Okay, so not a ghost not... yet. So maybe, probably not. We're not looking for a ghost. We're looking for a gnome. Who knows? You might be dead. <laughs> Is it a gnome ghost? Do gnomes have ghosts? A ghost. <laughs> a ghost. Hmm. <laughs> a gnome. <laughs> um. I start writing down a bunch of different ways <laughs> to combine ghost and gnome. <laughs> uh, so, what did she say anything else to you, or? That's it. Just a scooter named uh, Scooter. Who's a gnome? A gnome named Scooter. Um, he's scooter been here. She hasn't seen him in a while. Did she maybe say what room he was gonna go in, or what room he had, or anything? Oh, oh no! Oh, that would have been that would have been a good question to ask. I remember. Um, the game show host. He said something to you about him, didn't he? That he never stopped by to get his ticket. Yeah, but there was something before that. Eugene just like grabs his face and like pulls <laughs> on his face, and he's like, "All right." 
what, what, can, can either of you put your brains together and, and, and just, <laughs> just, and, and ever speak. just remember for me? I'm sorry, go ahead, Fox. Sorry. I was going to say, Fog answers this question by saying that he had seen him last week. And when Fog talks, it sounds like an anomaly of, like, multiple voices trying to talk over each other. <laughs> May just turns to Fox and is like, Huh! A single bead <laughs> of sweat runs down Eugene's <laughs> face, and he's just like, Uh-huh. So, has Al ever seen anything like Fog? Um, the Feywild has a lot of wild things in it. Yeah. But I don't think you've seen anything. Like, you've seen things maybe, like, similar-ish uh, from the Unseely Court. But even Fog stands out different yeah. from that. He's, like, weird, but, like, a different type of weird than yeah. I'm used to. Definitely doesn't ring as Fey weird. Yeah. Which is a little concerning, even for... For all yeah. I think at this point, May is picking up on Eugene's irritation, and she's like, Okay, Eugene, you can pick the next key. And I held up, hold out the box to him. Eugene just sticks his hand in the box. Okay. Uh, do you want to continue doing this in the order in the book, or do you want to pick a, a different room? Order in the book, boy. What's next? Okay. You feel around, and you pull out some uh, dead snakeskin. Looks like somebody has shed their skin in the box. Y Eugene just goes, ah! and throws it back. All right, uh, grab it. I think we need the snake next, May. I turn to Fettuccine. I, I pick up Fettuccine. And I'm like, I'm so proud of you. You're getting so big. And like, I have him point us to the next room. Okay, and and like like a uh, I forget the name of the the, the dog. I think they, they're nicknamed Pointer Hounds or something like that. But like it strains his body out. Yeah. Yeah. Strains his body out to point you in the right direction. Which will be the last door on the first floor. Um The door is made out of a heavy mahogany and it has an intri intricate geometric pattern of a snake carved into it. Alright, I'm gonna hold I'm gonna just like hold Fettuccini up to the door. Okay, Fettuccini crawls into the carving and slithers his way up until eventually his head goes into a little groove uh, near the top um, and enters into it uh, fully, disappearing out of sight. And then you hear a click and the door opens. I'm I've, going I've, to gesture to everyone else. I'm, uh, I'm going to hold the door for them. I'm like, here you go. Yeah, we're going to go in. I'd go in first. I've been in this room before, right? Yes, this is the jungle room. Yeah. Do I know anything that's in here, or do I have I just been, like, in it? Um, I mean, the jungle room is one that you would probably would have felt one of the most comfortable. So yeah. you've been here a while, so you do know that there are two, um... Quote unquote monkeys. Oh. <laughs> um. You've seen them. They've made loud noises at you. Yeah. But you you've seen monkeys before. You know that they're just trying to mark their territory. Yeah. So as long as you don't get too close, you're fine. Yeah. I I, I keep my distance from them. I wave yeah. at them occasionally. I'm definitely not warning anyone about them though. <laughs> okay. As the party enters into the jungle, let me bring my thing back up. The room is small but humid. Um, there are no visible walls, though the room is a 20 foot by 20 foot confined space. You can see trees everywhere, and it feels like a rainforest in here. Um, you can see a little bit further ahead. There's a small clearing, and you can see, like, maybe maybe a hammock? Um, it's hard to see from this distance with all the trees in the way. And up above, it looks like open sky. Our first step, as always, is sort of looking around for our listeners. We're assuming they're listening, but we want yeah. to know where they are. Make a perception. 
aquí. I have to go read what my perception bonus is. Uh, okay. Oh, hell yeah. I see jack shit. Well, you don't see any posters yet. Okay. Do I see anything that looks like it would be a tasty treat? Um, <laughs> you know that over in the clearing, that there is a little treasure chest that has, like, camping stuff in it, which usually, every time the door is reopened um, from a new party, has some treats in it. I mainly mean, like... Flora. Like, are there forest mushrooms here? Yeah, absolutely there's forest mushrooms in here. I'm gonna go to the nearest grouping and of forest mushrooms. plenty of delicious moss. Yeah, l literally, I, I'm just ignoring the group. I'm, like, partway into the room already and just, like, by a tree, eating some, like, lichen and some mushrooms. Hell yeah. So, so uh, May has seen this and has started to <laughs> make her way to another area <laughs> of lichen. <laughs> like, I guess it's good. <laughs> Takes a little bit off and samples it. A very earthy flavor. <laughs> May goes, mmm. <laughs> just <laughs> like, right? takes a step, step back towards the croup. So good. Just like <laughs> eating it, like almost sideways like a cow does. It's really unnerving. Yeah. So, Eugene kind of, like, looks around. Uh, do I see anything besides that treasure chest? Yeah, make me a perception. Okie dokies. Um, that is a 19 plus 3, so 22. Okay. There are two big things that you notice. One... You can see about 16 monkeys scattered throughout the trees watching you all. That's a lot of monkos. Oh, One of them is wearing a sweater with an animated version of Hecna's face knitted onto it. Um, the other thing you see is a bright pink owl perched on a tree branch above the clearing. It looks to be almost like... Like cake coloring. Yeah. Um, and Stan not belonging in this room. Um, Eugene, I'm sorry, I was given a cracker. I apologize. It's okay. Uh, so, Eugene, he, he looks up, his eyes go wide, and he's like, who's the closest to Eugene? Like, Eugene kind of stepped in, stepped around, um... Whoever's closest, be they Gideon or... or uh, I would or, assume Gideon and Eugene probably yeah. at all, almost all times are close to together. Yeah. Uh, he, like, bumps Gideon, and he's like... Eyes up, big guy. What? What do you see? And he points to the trees. Yep. Uh, with them pointed out, you'll be able to see the monkeys. If we don't threaten them, they shouldn't be a problem. Let's hope not. Just let the other more spirited ones notice. Keep their distance. And Eugene slowly is going to cross the room over to Calamity. Ah? And just be like, um, uh, you may want to uh, observe your upward surroundings. Okay. Uh... And she'll go from looking at, like, the walls and the trees to just look up. Yep, you can see the owl that looks very out of place in this room and plenty of monkeys. Oh, well, we can't have that owl sitting there. You're right. No, totally no. throws off the decor. May oh. has noticed. She's like, it doesn't go. <laughs> it doesn't. No, I was more gesturing to the giant, the, the, the monkey things that are looking at us. As more people are speaking in the direction of the owl and gesturing towards it, it hoots three times, and it opens its beak and expels a mass of partially digested pellets. 
from this <laughs> distance, it's hard to make out what they are, but you can see the colors of red and white. And then it flies up into the air and then slides up the open door past you guys. You can just go... Do the colors look familiar, like, to anything that we've seen so far, or...? Um, Olive, you've seen a candy cane before. It, these are, like, the exact colors of a candy cane. Ah. And if I could try and pick them up, would I, um... And we're picking this up fucking barehanded, by the way, mm -hmm. in theory. But we're in a... Is it super close to the monkey? It's not super close to the monkey. You guys will be able to get over to the pellets, no problem. Okay. Yeah, so we're just going to grab, like, a handful and just sort of keep them in okay. our hands. You pick up a bunch of... It, it, and it does appear that this, this owl had just ate whole-ass candy canes. And mm -hmm. then spat them up as pellets. Neat. Um, and she's still just holding them in both of her hands as she walks away. E Eugene, uh, Eugene, kind of says. Avocado. Thanks. <laughs> Should we uh check the chest for, you know, scooter? <laughs> May goes ooh a chest and starts walking towards it. No 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 no. Okay. Gideon would, the rush over. Gideon would rush over and stop her from just opening it. Okay. Slow down there, your little one. May rolls her eyes. She's like, I have been correct so far this entire time. <laughs> it's not whether or not being correct. It's whether or not you are maybe making a mistake in a dangerous area. What's dangerous about this? <laughs> Eugene pulls his shield off his back and like saddles it up and he's like alright Gideon you throw it open we'll get behind me I like I just roll my eyes and take a step back I'm like whatever <laughs> I would lift the cover of the chest uh, open one and... two three <laughs> okay there's a lot of tension it's like the force goes silent as you're eyeing this chest and getting ready to open it. And there's like a pressure on your shoulders, Eugene. Yeah. As you do the count, one, two, three. And you open the chest, and on the inside of the, the, the lid is a poster of Hecna who goes, boom. <laughs> yeah, Eugene, Eugene jolts and like almost falls. Hello. Uh, the, okay. the poster starts laughing hysterically, and you can see like he's making a knee slap at, uh, motion, but he doesn't have a knee within the frame of the poster, so you can't mm -hmm. actually see it. Um, I've got no knees to slap, boy. <laughs> and you can see that there's um, there's there's camping gear in here, as well as a few like power bars and snacks. Get up, Eugene. It's just a poster. Yeah, okay, no, no, we're fine. We're good. We're fine. Shut it. Let's go. You're the only one that was convinced that we weren't fine. What? Look, I have been right several times before. When? <laughs> the bandits were very convincing, Gideon. <laughs> they were ten-year-old halflings. They were convincing, okay? They were um, two feet I'm tall, rummaging around. and they had sticks. I'm rummaging around in the chest and getting the snacks out and handing okay. some to Olive, taking some for myself. Okay. Sticks Is there anything yeah. that resembles a granola bar in there? Yes, absolutely. I will eat it. Okay. <laughs> Sticks are an instrument of force. I don't know where their parents were. They were very naughty children. Listen, they said boo. That's all they did, and you went running. Listen, okay? I don't need to be emasculated. <laughs> I'm front. not emasculating you. I'm That's telling you the truth. Exactly there was what more you're of them than me. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. Listen. There wasn't enough paladins to measure the number of halflings. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just... Ten of them is like five paladins. Mm -hmm. Let's just go <laughs> so we can like talk about this later or whatever. How many? I didn't even want to talk about it. You brought it, it up. 
Um, I like, I like, um, take a granola bar, two granola bars, and stuff one in each of their mouths. I'm like, <laughs> as fun as this conversation has been. How far you got to jump to get up to Gideon's mouth? I don't. I'm gonna try. Can I make an athletics check? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Can I, I help I her? Would, well, well, okay, I would resist on. this. Let's 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 clarify this real quick. Athletics is for climbing and such. Are you going to be climbing up Eugene? Just grabbing onto bits of armor and climbing up him? Or are you just doing a straight jump up, which would be acrobatics? Listen here, ginger boy. I'm going to do acrobatics. I think that's cooler. Okay. Uh, 16. Okay, so Eugene, mid-talking, May just jumps up and sticks a granola bar into your mouth. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, okay, very funny. Thank like, you, Meg. <laughs> I, I, I do the same for Gideon. <laughs> I would swat at it to try to knock it away. Yeah, you go ahead and make the acrobatics, May. All uh, right. And do it with disadvantage because Gideon is, is... He watched you do it to Eugene and then turned towards him with granola bar in hand. All right, it's a 13. It's a 13. So you jump up into the air, and you try to put it into Gideon's mouth, and while his hand did swat, like, yours out of the trajectory of his mouth, his mouth wasn't even open. He was ready. It was just closed tight. And then you also just kind of jab him in the cheek with it, and then get back to the ground. I feel like I've made my point. <laughs> and I walk away. <laughs> look down at her as it, after it happened. I'd be like... Just, like in shock that she would jab me in the cheek with a granola bar. <laughs> Fettuccine attempts to eat the granola bar. It's it's quite the sight. <laughs> I break off a little, like, fettuccine-sized bit of it. Okay. He gleefully eats it. This poor snake's diet. Oh my god. <laughs> it is not, like, literally none of it is what snakes should be eating. <laughs> I want to um, friend of this I'm gonna try so to like <laughs> I'm gonna try to like lead uh, Gideon and Eugene away from the conversation and um, I'm also gonna take the camping gear okay yeah well yeah Eugene's already headed out cause like there's no scooter yeah. in here and so if, and he's gonna like uh pointedly look at like olive and calamity have either of you been here before in this room specifically no well yeah well yes but i was wondering if you knew where the owl came from oh no i wanted to i wanted to see if i could call it to me but it kind of flew away too fast okay I well I, I would suggest staying away from the monkeys though they get a little throwy if you get too close. Didn't plan to. Uh, Calamity looked like you were going to try to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, do I remember anything about this place? Beyond the fact that it's you... where rubes stay? You feel like you should. There's, there's like, a tingling sensation of, like, you know when you're, like, trying to remember something, but you can't even yeah. remember what you're trying to remember? Yeah. Like, like, every time you try to focus on, like, any information about this place, that's what happens. Right. Uh, so there's, like, a pause, and the wings twitch a little bit more violently than normal. It's, nope, sorry, can't remember a thing. <laughs> ha! Ah! Uh. Okay. And um, she'll start to waddle out slowly. Yeah. Has all have ever seen the owl in there before? Or is no. that the first time the first, first time she's seen it in there? Interesting. Yep. Yeah, I want this owl. Eugene's gonna cast one final glance at the monkeys and then just leave. Okay. The party leaves, and assuming that you continue on with just making this easy on me, the next room you go to is a lever for the key. And you find that this lever fits into a door on the upstairs hallway. 
This door has a hatch wheel. The lever fits into the hatch wheel, and when you pull it, it turns the wheel so that you don't have to. Um, you can see through the uh, this little window on the hatch wheel of the door um, that it looks like this is an underwater room. You can see somebody swimming around inside. You can see a little like aquarium treasure chest. You can see painted fish, and it looks like the room is filled with water. I'll immediately start swimming. Or quote unquote swimming. Yeah. <laughs> Do How you deep open is the door? water? Uh, it looks like it's filling the room, which is a 20 foot by 20 foot cube. You guys um, open the door? Yeah, Eugene puts his hand on the on the like hatch wheel and he's like, Everybody, get on the side of the door that opens. Does everybody do that? Yeah. Uh, yes. You yeah. will very yeah. amusedly listen to instructions. Okay. Okay. So once uh, everybody is like on the side of the door as it opens, Eugene's going to brace against the door and pull it open so it like opens uh, outward from where they are. So if yep. water's going to flow out, it'll flow out, uh, you know, with them behind the door. Yeah. And not knock everyone over. Yes. Um, however, oh. you do this and no water flows out. You pause for a moment and then look into the uh, into the room and there's no water inside. When you look back through the glass, you can see that the glass makes whatever room it's looking into look like it's filled with water. So right now you're looking into the hallway and it looks like it's filled with water. Inside, you can see a man. It's like He's walking around with his legs but making swimming motion with his hands. He's dressed full head to toe in scuba gear. Yeah. Well, Eugene's um, gonna like poke his head in and be like, hello? Uh, real quickly, you also see that there okay. is several hammocks made of heavy netting, like fishing nets. Um, you can see that the uh, there's like rotting barnacle covered timbers um, uh, making up part of the hammocks as well. And aside from the uh, very honestly pretty shittily painted uh, sea life painted onto the walls and floor, on the ceiling, you can see what looks like a dolphin with Hecna's face. Um, when you say hello in, into the room, um, you can see a man, the, or the man swimming. Stop, look at you, go, Oh shit, kid, you're drowning! Start swimming! What? Swim! Swim, you fool! And he starts, like, making exaggerated swimming motions. Uh, Yushin. Make it scared. <laughs> <laughs> Eugene puts his arms up and starts to like swim around. Okay. He like he immediately comes down and goes, Thank God, you almost drowned, kid. Okay. Uh, I walk into the room. Oh shit, somebody's drowning! Quick, swim! <gasps> swim. <sighs> Gideon, no! <laughs> I'm just standing there because even if it was filled with water, I don't need to breathe. Yeah. May like May like swims over to try to save Gideon. <laughs> okay. Do you like how do you go about trying to save Gideon? Do you like grab his arms and like try to get him to do swimming motions, or are you like holding on to him while making swimming motions yourself? I'm holding on while making swimming motions myself. <laughs> okay. He uh the guy like he like puts his hand to his chest and goes, Oh, he almost gave me a fucking heart attack. I know, but it's okay, everyone's safe now. Yep, everyone's Woo! safe now, okay. Okay, sorry, what was your question? Uh, have you seen someone named Scooter? Ah! Uh, Scooter, uh, yeah, yeah, he was here not too long ago. He's trying all the rooms in the, uh, hostel. All the rooms, great, fantastic. Yep. Which one was he going into them. next? All not. oh good. Fuck if I know. Okay. <laughs> well. Goodbye. And you should just- Okay, bye! And Yushi just swims out of the room. <laughs> yeah, Calamity didn't enter this one. Her wings just keep twitching. Okay. Is there oh, anything no, else in this room other than this man? Um, there is a, like, like, um, aquarium treasure chest. Like, you know the ones that will open up and spit bubbles? And then the hammocks. Yeah, so if nobody wants to do anything else, I think we're gonna head on... Yeah, I'm good with moving on. Okay. As Gideon walks out, I continue to try to save him. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm just looking at her like so confused. Safe waters, friends! We cut, we the door on cut to a very slow shot of dun 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 <laughs> as Mess May works like paddling with one hand like don't worry, get here! I'll save We're you. gonna get through this! I'm gonna get you to safety! <laughs> it's like Baywatch. <laughs> uh. Anyway. So you guys move on to oh god my my throat hurts from yelling like that. <laughs> yeah, I have to keep uh. the thing of water next to me when I do the Eugene voice because it gets. Yeah. Uh... Give me just a sec. Uh, I'm gonna get a drink. Okay. okay. <laughs> As we get to the door, we get to the other side, and I collapse, breathing heavily. <laughs> just. <sighs> Gideon Hello, will have like a what? claw. Don't ever scare me like that again. He's like dabbing Mayworth. Scare Mayworth's you forehead. how? What'd you say, Calamity? She's dabbing like Mayworth's forehead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, she saved your life, Gideon. Be grateful. <laughs> how did she save my life? Clearly, you were drowning. He has amnesia! <laughs> Fog's just gonna <laughs> nod his head. Oh no, the the, sa the sailor's already, amnesia. I'm already dead. <laughs> I'd start checking your vital signs. <laughs> uh, notably, he doesn't have any. <laughs> we lost him, and I've collapsed. <laughs> Is it like the like? You know, like, the dramatic hold on to is, like, the fainting lady. That's what I'm seeing right now. Yup. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Okay. We'll Lemmy's get through this her, somehow. Like, Zooped up is fanning her face. <laughs> I haven't I'm been sobbing alive in Calamity's the whole arms. time you've known me, May. <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes I can still hear He was voice. so young! Yuji says, guys, we kind of need to go. I like, I'm like, okay, and I stand up and I brush myself <laughs> off. Uh, the entire time May was playing dead, by the way, Fettuccini was just laid out on the ground next to her oh, on his back. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so Eugene reaches into the box. And pulls out an axe. Oh. You can see just ahead of you. There is a door made entirely out of wood with no handle. Well, Ooh. it's time to show what Get the... hacking! Who's the ah. strongest? Yes, but I mean. The... Make like a tree and get chopped down! Yes. I I cut a lot of firewood at the monastery. I, I think I can get I, I can get this one. <laughs> okay. I ram the door. <laughs> Uh, I mean, okay. Olive, make a uh, strength check with disadvantage. Uh, well, I actually have an, an action for my attack called Ram. Yep. <laughs> uh, oh god, where is it? Uh, what you said with disadvantage or? Yes. Oh god, how do I do this? Uh... This door is unusually thick. Oh boy. And you're trying with to force C's. it down. You're Independent Seder, and I give her bardic inspiration. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, so what? So, disadvantage, but you also have bardic inspiration. Okay, what does and the. Give her guidance. What does the bardic inspiration do? That's a... I can add 1d6 to your roll. Do you yeah. want me to roll, or do you want um, Riley uh, to roll? Uh, Riley, you can go ahead and roll the extra d6. Okay. Uh, where's my d6? Great. Perfect. What'd you get total? Um, hold on. I'm adding numbers that I don't add normally. Uh. Uh, that's seven in total. Seven in total? Oh, yeah. I'm not even great. going to raise the DC. <laughs> It's a DC 10, so you don't make it. 
<laughs> yeah, I rolled, I rolled like a seventeen, and then the disadvantage was a two, Oof. and then I rolled a two on the bardic inspiration. Oof. So you just you 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 do a ram. You you get ready and you slam against it, but uh, this is a really thick door. Um, yeah. Just kind of slam my head into you it. Just slam your head into it. No, no damage because I mean y you're you're built for slamming your head into things. Um, and you just kind of back up and you shake your head. Uh, Eugene, there's space for you to swing an axe now. Um, yeah, just let me uh, just let me let me do this. And Eugene's gonna raise yeah. the axe and yep. just swing it down. Okay, make a strength check. Uh, let's see, fourteen plus. Uh, four, so 18. Okay. I want to bring up, this is a DC 10. They literally have a fail safe in here for if the party can't make it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a 50% chance just from rolling the flat die, and they have a thing in... Yeah, it's like, oh, if, the, if wow. the party can't get in, Ramona or another staff member of the hostel can help, but they'll be unhappy to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, yeah, so you chop through the door. It takes a little bit, more than a few swings. This is a weirdly thick door. Um, and inside is like a little campground. You can see like painted on the walls. It looks like trees, but there's no actual trees. Um, you can see a little fire, like a fire circle. Uh, some places set up tents. There's already one tent set up. There's a small little river that cuts through the, the room. This open sky above you. Um, and a few posters around. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody, I'm get to looking for Scooter. <laughs> I'm consoling Olive. I'm like, hey, you know, you're a strong, independent satyr. Maybe your strength is in, like, your stomach. Yeah, I think it is. I'm really mad these trees are fake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, like, adjusts her, uh, her olive uh, branch crown that she has on her head because it got kind of crooked. She has to redo one of the flowers. I, like, have just noticed that the trees are fake. I adjust my monocle. <laughs> Fog gives no fucks, and he just starts rubbing his antlers on it. <laughs> 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 Damn trees, man. They're always out for me, man. So, um, it's always trees. Jess, can I roll a perception check to see if I see anything yes, untoward? Absolutely. Thank you. You can do perception or investigation. Everyone's? Yep. I will do perception. Uh, Wait, can we all roll this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. 14. Mm. Very in character on my perception rolls. I got a seven. Uh, Gideon, you said thirteen. Yes. I okay. got uh, a nineteen. Okay. Uh, between Eugene and Olive, um, you guys find a trail of candies and wrappers leading slightly away from the camp to an abandoned compass wrapped in a small handkerchief. The name G. Figgy Puddin is embroidered on the handkerchief. Oh, the compass does not point north. Instead, it does point to a fixed point, but you can't quite tell what the significance of it is from within this room. You follow it, and it just leads to a wall. Okay. Um. Olive, do you want to keep the the uh, compass? Maybe tell me where it goes after we get out of here or something. Yeah. If I walk up and down, like, the wall that it's pointing to, does it move enough to, like, tell if it's, like, in the wall or if it's in, like, a room next door? You can tell or... that it's close. It's got to be within this building. Okay. Well, it's definitely close. I will just hold it in my palms and just watch it hmm this may be the clue that we're needing and eugene's gonna go back to the group and be like we found a compass oh cool yeah 
And you can show it to whoever you want. Yeah, I'll just, like, hold it out and, like, turn it so it, like, shows that it's pointing in a specific direction. Um, okay. And Eugene's gonna be like, we should probably go out and follow it. Alright. Might lead yeah. to our mysterious scooter. Was there anything else in this room that we could? Uh, with as high of an investigation or perception check you guys gave, um, you've you've searched everything else of note. Okay. Um, heading outside, you see that the compass skips over the um, the boring room. Uh, which you can tell is definitely the boring room. It's just a simple tavern door with a big antique-looking lock on it that the key would fit snugly into. Eugene pats and the boring room door. <laughs> And instead goes to the room across from it. It is a massive wooden door uh, decorated in all kinds of candy designs to look like a big candy, like almost Christmas tree kind of deal. Uh, the door handle looks like an open hand. Uh, you don't have any keys that seem to open this one. In fact, the only key you have left is the boring room's antique key. Eugene looks um. at them. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, she's just making sounds. Okay. <laughs> Eugene looks at the boring room key and he's like, Well, clearly that key goes to that door, but uh, I don't see anything that maybe a hand could want. <laughs> Eugene walks up and gives it a firm handshake. It shakes your hand, but doesn't open. Oh, well, that's all I got. Is there anything else notable about the door? Um, nothing off of a glance. Oh, uh, well, maybe she forgot to give us one of the keys. Here, come on, let's go back down. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Unless if everybody else wanted to try something. I mean, nobody's done, like, a sick handshake yet. <laughs> May goes up and immediately tries to start creating a secret handshake with the it, door. It, it follows through with it. <gasps> you create a secret handshake with the door. Oh my god. Amazing. <laughs> well, now we have to take the door with us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like just try to take it off the hinges afterwards. You're coming with us, pal. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, uh, I was just gonna put the uh, the compass in the palm of the hand. Okay. Um, it closes around it as if like checking it, and you can see its fingers move around checking its surface, and then opens up and just drops the compass to the ground. I'll pick it up. Okay. Um, there is the boring room, although you guys can absolutely skip it, and then go downstairs and talk to Ramona. Uh, well, Eugene is, however, gonna open the boring room and poke his head in. Yeah. Okay. Um, the traditional brass key fits snugly into the matching brass lock on the door, and the door opens silently. The room is a perfectly normal hotel room. The walls are covered in an ugly pat patterned wallpaper depicting Hecna's face, whose expression changes slightly every few seconds. Uh, the room has a pair of twin beds covered in red velvet blankets, each flanked by simple wooden nightstands. A magical sconce filled with uh, a candle is lit above the desk. On one of the desks, you can see a notepad, but you can't quite see what it says on it. Eugene walks in and takes the notepad. Okay, you can see the notepad has written in Ramona's handwriting, Gertrude visiting next week. Don't forget. And it's signed Ramona. Ger Gertrude, and he says, huh. Hey, Olive? Yes? What name did that uh, compass have on it? What was the God? I forgot the name. What it was it, what did it G say? figgy uh, figgy pudding. G figgy something. G. I'll, like look, I'll look at it, like wherever it's written. Figgy yeah. put it. Maybe G. Maybe that's the G person from the compass. And that it would, is pointing to that other room. Yeah, and that would be why it was pointing to the room. We should go tell the lady. Why is this compass pointing to her though? Maybe it's hers. A lot of hey, people. Uh, hey, what, Eugene. What's up? 
Let me double check what the save is, but you're about to have to make me a saving throw. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, surely not. Surely never I could have to do something like that. <laughs> oh no. There's just straight up no saving throw for that. Okay. Oh All right. no. Alright, okay, what, what, no. what happened? You're mid-talking to Olive, and then you suddenly hear a bunch of honking. Yeah. And it's distracting, and you can't hear anything else. What? It seems to be coming from one of the drawers in the desk. No, uh, what I'm saying is, we gotta go tell the- Hold on! And Eugene sets- Why are you the... shouting? I'm ten feet from you! Eugene sets the thing mm. down and just walks over to the drawer and opens it. Do any of us oh, I'm so else? glad you do. Yeah. Uh, no, nobody else could oh hear it. Oh my god! Oh, what's no. gonna happen? Oh no. I don't think this is ever happening. I'm cringing so bad right now. What, what's, up? Just like, what's up, Dad? You? What's up, Dad? Tell me what's up. What did I do? <laughs> Give me just a moment to read this over. Okay. I'm, I need to read this thoroughly. Okay! Oh, God. oh no. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh, I'm sweating. Okay. So, Eugene, you open up the drawer, and you can see inside, deflating and reinflating, with the same speed that the honking sound is happening, what looks to be like a clown nose. And then it shifts, and you can see the rest of the body ha uh, con uh, continues past it. Um, let me go ahead and share an image with y'all. Dun, dun, dun. So dangerous. There you go. Oh Yay. no. Oh no. Wait, is Oh yummy. Is it just like the weird bug thingies? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and it leaps at your face. Okay. Oh, no. Is now this is an attack, attack roll. Okay. It's an attack roll and then a saving throw. Okay. If it succeeds. Okay. I nat twenty on the attack roll. Ah! Oh, okay. No. Okay, Jask. When it yep. hits, when it hits me, hellish rebuke. Okay. <laughs> so, um, hellish rebuke. Does that allow a save? Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna I think check. it's safe for half. Let me check. 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 Oh my god, I can't believe I got fucked up by a snozzling. Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay, <laughs> hellish rebuke. Hum. <laughs> you point your finger at a creature that damaged you. Uh, that damaged you is momentarily surrounded by hellish flames. The creature must make a dexterity saving throw, or it takes uh, 2d10 fire damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. So, a point of interest. It does zero damage. No! Well, 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 oh my well. god. I mean, so, do I see this happening? Because I assume I'm like near. 20, how this is going to play out is okay. you still get your wisdom saving throw. You will make it at this advantage. Okay, can I use one of my one of my inspirations and make it an advantage? You, you abs well, you, or with regular roll. Regular you roll. make it an even roll. Uh, okay. Olive, you watch Eugene like yell at you like that. Hold on, let me there's something and then opens up a drawer and something leaps at his face and latches on and Eugene okay um, Eugene what happens this is what you see I'm gonna roll real fast yeah okay so I rolled a 15 plus uh, you said it was a wisdom saving throw yep 16 fully um, and what happens is, Olive, you see this strange, almost green energy snap out of Eugene for a second, and it looks like a, it looks like a hand with claws, like made out of blue green fire that tries to swipe at this thing, but it doesn't coalesce fully. And like it, like you see the arm and the joint, but the hand doesn't fully co coalesce in time. And I'm supposing this thing latches to my face. Yeah, and it it grabs onto your nose, and you can feel a slight pain in your nose. Thanks yeah. to you making the wisdom saving throw, you're not charmed by it and trying to protect it. Yeah. So you can try to get it off. 
Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, if I see this thing attached to his face, can I try to just pull it off of his yeah. nose? Uh, in fact, the whole group can see this, because Eugene was being pretty loud, you guys probably would have looked in. Yeah. Eugene screamed. All right. Yeah, I imagine I ran in, Yeah. because I was also talking to him. Um, this thing has three hit points. Your party of six adventurers, it's dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, it's dead. Someone's gonna kill it. <laughs> well, actually, can I, since it attacked Eugene, can I say what happens? Yeah, absolutely. Um... In a very, like, snap decision, uh, Eugene thrusts out his palm, blue-green energy coalesces in the center of his palm, and a spear of, like, spiked flame shoots out of his hand and embeds the thing into the floor. There you go. Perfect. Well, that's a way to deal with a schnozzling. And he's just, like, <laughs> he's breathing hard, and his gauntleted hand is, like, smoking, like, it set the leather of the hand on fire. And he's just, like... And he, like, his hand's shaking as he, like, curls his hand back into a fist, and he's like, I guess that was one of the things she was talking about. Yep! Olive's gonna go up to Eugene and take his hands and just kind of druid clap some, like, little, like, lilies just to kind of calm him and just kind of... And, and Eugene looks, and he's like, Thank you, but I need... I need the hand for sword things. And he, like... Shakes, she like shakes it, and uh, and uh, that looks like it, it hurts. Like it looks like it hurts a little bit. Um, and uh, Eugene just kind of stands up and he looks at the scorch mark on the floor for like two seconds, and he's like sort of regaining his composure. And he's like, "All right, we need to go." Right. <sighs> and, I did put the upper half of her mask for a bit before just gesturing out the room and Eugene just kind of takes the notepad and leaves okay but yeah that's mm -hmm. what happened uh give me just a moment yeah so you guys go back down to Ramona yes yeah okay uh, as you come down the stairs, she gives you a big, friendly, customer service smile. Hello, did you enjoy your stay? Wait, no, you didn't stay, did you? And she, like, looks through her notepad. Well, uh, yep. We're gonna stay, but I think I found this that belongs to you. And he's gonna slide her the, uh, the, uh, notepad. Oh, my other notepad! She takes it and looks at the writing that's on the front page and goes... Gertrude. Oh, yeah, she's... She already checked in. Oh, no, I forgot to bring her her cupcakes. Uh, we also found this, and he's going to set the compass on the... Uh, oh, that it, looks like Gertrude's compass. Oh, so G-Figgy Pudding is Gertrude, then? Yeah, she's the good ghost. Right. Yeah. And you said something about her cupcakes? I did? I did, yes! Uh, where did I put them? You want us to bring them to her? Yes, if you don't mind. As soon as I can <gasps> find them. And she, like, starts looking around under the desk and such. And then eventually pulls out a tray of very stale cupcakes. It looks like they were supposed to be delivered probably a few days ago. And, uh, Eugene just gestures for Calamity. <laughs> yeah, Calamity will pick it up. Very, like, um... It looks like maybe you're not sure if she's worked this job before, but it looks like she has. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and pointedly, I will say, for lore reasons, he gestures with the hand that didn't fire mm -hmm. the flaming hell bolt. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, um, technically, it's time for Gertrude to check out. Uh, it's actually a little bit over time. She usually knows it's time to check out when we bring her her cupcakes. Uh, but I forgot to bring right. them a few days ago, so... <laughs> Oh, okay. Is that going to be a problem? Just to remind her it's time to check out and to clear her stuff and, you know, to get right. out. But okay. it shouldn't be a problem. As long as you bring in her sweets, she's a sweetheart. Understood. <laughs> um, I would like to say uh, at this point, uh, we have started to um, decorate the platter with the little, like, fucking pellets. pellets. Yeah. Yep. 
Uh, Absolutely. Also you a very ornate looking candy cane. You're gonna need mm -hmm. this to get inside. Um, Calamity cannot hold the tray in. Thing, so <laughs> I'll take the. I'll take the. I'll take the candy cane. Oh, well, damn it! She can't smile. Um, she looks like she's having a good time, but she always looks like she has a good time, right? 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 Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> It'd be criminal if she wasn't. Right? Uh, <laughs> I feel like that's so literal. <laughs> I'm gonna take gonna... the candy cane and start twirling it like a baton. <laughs> Who who is carrying the cupcakes? Calamity. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna kind of. Uh, I would say sneak, but it's kind of hard to sneak when you have hooves. So, <laughs> I'm gonna just kind of come up behind Calamity and kind of like lean over and just like stick my tongue at one of the uh, the nope, cupcakes. Nope, 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 no, 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 no. Uh, and she like it. ducks past. We don't mess with instructions, okay? <laughs> um, and she's gonna start jauntily coming up the stairs. Oh, just looks so disappointed. Her tongue is like sticking out a little bit. Like, how dare you do this? May oh, is so sad. She takes out the squished cake from her pocket <laughs> and hands it over to Olive. Oh, I eat it. That delicious pocket cake. Yes, I was gonna lick the candy cane key too, but pocket cake, cha cha cha. Mm -hmm. The wanting to lick things reminds me. Um, on Thursdays I have a uh, dumb of ass heart of gold character that I play, um, <laughs> and uh, he recently had a horrible transformation, and his tongue is now seven feet long. Oh um, God! And he has no self control, so there's a lot of things we don't know what they do, and he just keeps trying to lick them. Yeah. Yeah, Olive likes things that look tasty, and that includes bright treats. Yep. She's just so, like, I want to eat things. You guys reapproach the candy cane door. Putting the candy cane into the hand, it grasps the candy cane, turns as if you had turned a knob, and then the door opens up. Immediately, you feel, feel a, a chill, as this room appears to be like a, a, a lightly snow-dusted forest, with a Candy Cottage, very Hansel and Gretel, up on the top of a hill. I do our secret handshake as I walk through. <laughs> it, it does it back. Mm. Impressive with a candy cane. So, yep. Eugene is going to look down at the compass. Okay, following that compass will bring you up to the cottage. Yep, and he's just going to do that. Okay, it's colder in this area than uh, elsewhere in the Revelia. Among the trees is a brightly colored cottage that looks like a real-life gingerbread house with piped icing around the windows and doors. Large pieces of sugar candy uh, comprise the shutters and walkways. From the lush soil grow vibrant, faintly glowing mushrooms made of cotton candy. An inviting warm glow mm. flickers in the cottage windows. The otherwise pleasant view is disrupted by a loud shouting, which echo and reverberate through the uh, forest as if amplified by a speaker. Get me out of here! Help! Help! Right, well that seems to be who we're looking for. Well, this is a quaint little cottage. Mm -hmm. Where did you say those delicious looking mushrooms were at? <laughs> All over the place. Oh, I'm just grabbing a bunch of them. Yeah, this looks... Okay. Taking them into my bag. I'm putting glowing mushrooms... <laughs> it tastes looks, like candy cane. This looks too quaint, if you ask me. Still, we have a job to do. Indeed. It'll be fine. As you approach the cottage, you can see what appears to be a large, sugary ooze. Slowly moving around the cottage. Eugene freezes. Have I ever heard of like any paladins exterminating oozes or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and he you like, know what an ooze is. He like puts his hand up and he's like, "Slow down, guys. That's an ooze." You know that they're not very intelligent and they yeah. can't see very far. If you're outside of twenty feet from them, you're you're golden. They're not very smart and they can't see us. So let's just wait until it goes by and then we can go up to the cottage, okay?
I'm helping Olive pick mushrooms. Yeah, I'm still picking <laughs> mushrooms and Olive flowers. Olive aren't even following you. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't think Olive's even acknowledged that there is, like, a slime or ooze anywhere. She's There's just... an another, like, tired exhale from Eugene. <laughs> he just, he's just like, guys! You I brought need... a deer to the forest, come on! I need you over here, please! Lemony is just like uncomfortably like like exactly three paces behind Gideon and Eugene, just sort of sitting there with the tray, very like blank faced. All right. All right. Um, May looks up and she's like, "Guys, there's an ooze in here." Ah! Well, I would be looking over at Lemony's tray. Eugene yeah. just rolls his eyes and he's like, "Yeah, that's what I tried to tell you like five minutes ago." Um, may, may, it's like, um, maybe you should, like, speak up. I don't know. I didn't hear you. Eugene, like, licks his lips, and he's like, Get in, Calamity, come with me. I'm going to the cottage. <laughs> I'm eating mushrooms. <laughs> I'm trailing behind. I'd walk down to where the two are gathering mushrooms. I'd stand over and be like, it's time to go. Let's move. <laughs> Yes, sir, and I do Give a him the dance chair. <laughs> <laughs> I do a very military like uh salute and then I march off. I'll be right back. One of my ferrets is doing something weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're all yeah, there go. following. She's got a job to do. Her brain is now on that singular job. Mm -hmm. Okay. The ooze passes out of sight as long as you guys, you know, stop and wait for it to go away. And you are mm. free to get up to the cottage. Right. Eugene's gonna step forward and just like knock on the door. Um, hello? Gertrude! We brought you your cupcakes! There is almost no pause before you hear um, a loud whooshing sound and then the door opens and there's a ghostly woman, older woman, standing on the other side. Did you say? How do you cupcakes? do, Miss Ger? How do you do, Miss Gertrude? These are for you. I do believe it is about time for you to be ready, getting ready to head on out. Yes. And she uh, sort yes. of gently hands over the tray. Finally, my breakfast. I thought it was getting to be a while. And she takes the cupcakes, and just you watch her take one and just shove it into her mouth, and you can see it go in, and like you can see through her partially. So you see it go in and then follow down her track line. Mm-hmm. And she just swallows it whole without chewing. Uh, Eugene kind of opens his mouth and he says, I have returned. Yeah, so... Um, Feel free to do enjoy the tray decor as well! And she sort of makes a gesture towards the um, little candy cane pellets. Delicious! And she takes one and puts that in her mouth as well and eats it. <laughs> so, have you seen Scooter? Yes! He's in my dollhouse. Your dollhouse? Yes! Can we have Ramona. the dollhouse? I mean, you have to ask Ramona. Ramona left me a dollhouse to play with. It, well, had, a, it had a scooter in it. Ramona sent us to go find Scooter. Oh, well. I mean, I have to check out anyways, and it's not mine to take. And she just hovered, like, she literally passes through you, Eugene, lifting the tray so that it wouldn't collide with yeah, you. Eugene just... <sighs> yeah, it's cold, like yeah. ice cold. Yeah. Yeah, Eugene just... <sighs> And, then... and she goes to leave. Uh, before leaving, she goes, Oh, um, when you see Ramona, ask her to get a, 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 a poster in here. I mean, it's weird being away from Hecna's gaze. <gasps> uh, and of then course. Eugene, like, exhales, and mm -hmm. he's like, Okay, yeah, um, yeah, all right, yeah, okay, yeah, all right. I'll do that. I'll totally, I will totally do that. I will most certainly 100% not, not do that. I will do that, is what I'm saying. Thank you, and Okay. Oh, oh, he, okay. Uh, Calamity? Uh. Yeah? Dollhouse time for, for yes. Eugene and Calamity. Um, and then he's gonna, like, go in the house. Yep. And look, uh, look at the, uh, the, try, try to find the dollhouse. Okay, uh, following the screams, um, 
you can find the dollhouse just fine. Yeah. What was described as a dollhouse is actually a one inch by one inch cube with a door on it and several windows. Once it's a, one side of the uh, cube has the door, all the other sides have the windows. And looking inside, you can see what looks to be a gnome shrunk down into this room uh, that looks like a really nice, like very up, up there uh, tavern room, but painted mm -hmm. in just gaudy colors. Hi, Scooter! He waves and then motions towards the door. Yeah, Eugene's going to open the door. Uh, it doesn't open. Or... <laughs> Let's get him down to Gertrude, yeah? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, hey, guys! And he's going to, like, call for the others. Huh? Uh, <laughs> change of plans. We're staying in this room. Um, as he says that, um, Calamity's gonna very casually, um, cause she doesn't know who Scooter is, right? So she's very casually, she's putting her hand over the one inch, one inch thing to yep. cover the windows. Um, okay. try and muffle sound. Um, and she just sort of stares at him and she says, just remember I'm a reveler too, okay? I'll probably stay somewhere else. Eugene, like, he gets this knowing look in his eye, and he's like, it, like, like, literally, if a look could say shit, man, that's sad. Like, he would, that's what he's saying. And then he's like, and then he's like, yeah, okay, do what you want. And then she will uncover her hand and just sort of lift him. You know, you look very cute in this little tiny little one inch thing. Very friendly. Uh... And she'll start to waddle on out. Okay. I like how all your characters waddle. <laughs> Even the ones that don't wear a giant dress that would cause them to wobble. All of them listen, just waddle. Listen! This time, this time it has a reason, okay? And then she, she waddled away. Waddle, waddle. It might be that. It might be that. <laughs> and then Calamity said, hey, you got any grapes? <laughs> Anyway, I'm sorry for detracting. Let's let's go. It's let's okay. go to the lady. I feel bullied. You should. Nah. <sighs> so, is there anything else you guys want to do in this uh, in this room before you left to go talk to Ramona? I'm like sneaking candies off of this house <laughs> and putting them in my pocket for yeah, later. I Olive and Mayworth both work. <laughs> yeah, I've been gathering the mushrooms specifically. Yep. I have I been know. feeding little bits of this to fettuccine the, the entire time. I don't know how many I have managed to pick. Um, roll me 2d8 and add those together. Oh, jeez. Alright, where are my d8s? Actually, add those with your nature. Ooh. What is my nature? Ooh, it's a plus three. Yay. Twelve of them. Awesome, well, awesome. Eleven because I've already eaten one. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that, you guys are free to get back to Ramona with the cube. Mm. <laughs> okay, so Eugene's gonna. Oh, actually, Calamity has the cube, not Eugene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Sheila sort of, do we, do I have the tray back or did Gertrude just take the tray? You took the tray. <laughs> nice. Um, so we're going to present Scooter very dramatically, right? So we, we have a hand over it and then we go uh, over to the doll, right? Yep. May I present to you the one... The only, and then she looks to Mayworth for like a drum roll. I have already been drumming. Yes. <laughs> Start clumping my uh my hooves on the ground. Our ghost, who is not actually a ghost, <gasps> scooter trapped in the one inch room, <sighs> making <sighs> sounds like a big. <laughs> All starts clapping. 
I love this so much. <laughs> um, yeah, so you do that, and Ramona goes, Oh, gosh, she's been in there so long. I'm so sorry, Scooter. And she, like, takes the cube, pulls it on the desk, taps it three times, and coming tumbling out, you see Scooter. And actually, I, have, I literally have an mm -hmm. image of what this exact scene looks like. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> scooter! Poor, poor Scooter. Yep. I like help Scooter up with my finger and like dust him off a little bit. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he also dusts himself off and he um, clears his throat and goes, You left me in there long enough, Ramona! He, as he like wags his finger at her and then turns back to you guys with a big old beaming smile. Thanks for busting me out of the clink. Sometimes a fun stay is a little too fun, if you know what I mean. And he winks over oh, at Calamity. Oh, don't I? <laughs> hey, I think um, Pinky was looking for you. Was she hasn't seen you in a while. Oh you my god, go I miss her. her. She's a sweetheart. I should oh, go talk to her. Just... Yes, tell her I said hi. I will. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean... I should probably get to that. I, she hasn't uh -huh. seen me so long. She must be worried sick. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, thank you for busting me out. I'll see y'all later. He gives like finger guns Bye. and jets. May also gives finger guns. And then, like, she's about to leave, or he's about to leave before he, like he stops at the door, and goes, "Oh!" Whips around, comes back, and he like pats himself down a little bit, and then pulls out five very crumpled red tickets. Uh, sorry. Um, this is all I have. But uh, you rescued me, so I mean. Um, this should work as a portal, and he hands it to you. To me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I I say, oh, thank you. I don't have any concept of what money is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, like, turn to the rest of the group to for help. And then he just turns and leaves the moment you've turned away. You got more tickets! Yay! Oh, I forgot to give him his shit. Oh well, <laughs> it's fine. We can do uh, the same later. Ramona lets you know that you can cash in the checks for the tickets at her desk, which she will then give you two red tickets because you have two <laughs> checks. Okay, I'm gonna hand one to each of us, and uh, Eugene is gonna say. Uh, hey, Miss Ramona, I actually have a, uh, another thing I'd like to ask of you. Yeah, what's that? So, you already gave us the key, the, the candy cane. Um, we'd actually like to stay in the candy cane room, if that's okay with you. Right, so, um, I discussed it with my higher-ups. Because you helped me out, I'm able to give you a permanent 50% discount on any room. Um... Which would mean any room other than the sweet suite is only one red ticket. But if you want to stay in the candy cane room, that's going to be four red tickets per night. E Eugene's gonna, Eugene's gonna like look at her slyly and just be like, Now you know, we went through a lot of hullabaloo to get poor Scooter out, you know? And... May like signed like fifteen, like I th I think I think I saw her sign an elbow, like fifteen people, <laughs> a bunch of bags of popcorn. She is a local celebrity, I would think. She is. I like <laughs> saunter over to Ramona and I lean on the desk. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Hey, have we met? And she offers out her hand. I present mine as well. I'm like, hi. <laughs> so, uh, what if? It was only two red tickets a night. I can give you a free discounted night for helping me. Just one night, though? Just one. Mm, he, he, like, he, like, like frowns and kind of does that thing. Yeah, I mean, okay. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, th th there is also a special deal, by the way, where... Um, if you don't want a specific room, you can ask for a random room, and uh, that only costs one red ticket to do. No, I think I want to stay in the sweet suite. Something spoke to I'll me. I'll take a random room. You got it. 
Uh, beep, roll me a D8. Okay. Please, 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 <laughs> please, 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 no. Please. Oh, no, Calamity's just taking it for herself. Yeah. Yeah. A two? Yeah. Uh, she hands you another noisemaker. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> But yes, the sweet sweet. I can I can uh, I can comp the sweet sweet for tonight. Uh, after that, it'll be two, what? no, four red, eight. Oh, I've already forgotten. And she checks you her notes. You said four before. Thank you. Uh, she four said two. Yeah, no, she, she, she said, said two. two. No, she oh, said two. She? I remember her saying two earlier. Did I? Yes, yes you said yeah. two. Hold on, and you can see on her notebook she has four written down, and she crosses it off and writes two. Yes! Eugene feels bad for lying, but it's okay. <laughs> He'll say prayers about it later. <laughs> now we just need to get that down to one. And with the 50% off discount! <laughs> yeah, cause, you know, because Mayworth helped so much. Yeah, that's why yeah. Why you're getting the, the free room, right? The, yeah, this... the... Well, you said we were getting the free room for the night, and then because May helped out and signed so many autographs, I thought there was another free room, but I don't remember. Okay, two nights of free rooms. She writes that down. Yeah. <laughs> and, this and, the, the rest are, very clearly and the rest are two okay. tickets. Yeah, and the rest are two tickets. Oh, yeah. I've got that already. Yeah. And she, like, draws an arrow from the two nights of free rooms to the two red tickets for Sweet Sweet 4. <laughs> Uh, crew, and then underlines it and circles it. All right. Yeah, got it. Okay. Glad we could get that worked out. Yeah, it's great. All right, guys. You know, well, you know, gee, Willikers, I'm Bush, and I think <laughs> that we should all go to the Tweet Suite and Hi. and speak about what what just how much fun, how much just very much fun we had today, and definitely not about anything else. <laughs> Um, Wait, as... What time of what time of day is it? It is impossible to tell because the moon stays in the same place forever. Okay. It is just always nighttime with a bright full moon above you. You are starting to feel kind of tired. You've been here a while. Okay. Uh, as... Yeah, and yeah, uh, Gideon is still technically exhausted, isn't he? He has a point of exhaustion yes. from earlier. He does have a point of exhaustion. <laughs> Jesus. He's just like an exhausted dad that have been following us around the carnival. Yeah. yeah. All day. So yep. uh, so, Sounds like my real life. So Eugene, uh -huh. haha, uh, Eugene is uh, gonna say, uh, "Yeah, you guys, uh, you guys, you guys, go ahead and head up. I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get keys for all of us." Okay, does the party head up? Fog will yep. see you. Yes. Okay. Okay, well, he's gonna look. Are you. Are you. St Fog, are you staying with me? Yes. Okay. Fog will stay well, beside when, when everyone leaves except for Fog, Eugene's gonna look back mm -hmm. at Fog and then look to. Uh, look to Calamity and just be like, mm -hmm. you know, Miss Calamity, I, I really had fun today. I wanted, oh, to, I'm let, glad. I wanted to let you know. Um, <laughs> also, so. My Everyone's paladin order twitched. used to say, my paladin order used to say this really cool thing about having fun. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to let you know that even in pitch blackness, the uh, smallest light can make the biggest difference. So uh, remember that, you know? Mm -hmm. And he like points. He's like, and, th and then like gives her a look like, seriously, remember that. Oh. But, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a bit more twitching of the wings, as if they're trying to yeah. fight against the, uh, strings. Um, and she just sort of smiles, and she nods! Well, yeah. she's not smiling, but you gives, like, a very emphatic nod and thumbs and, up. And that's what we would say when we were having fun! Hmm! Um, and he puts unusual sort of... emphasis on having fun. Yeah. Um. Thank you! That's very informative and very helpful! Um, oh, I'm just, I'm very glad I could be of help and of service. Mm-hmm. 
Um, as they, I'm assuming after that, she's gonna start sort of heading up and just sort of waiting for them both to head up as well with her. Yep. Yeah, Eugene's gonna go to head up and he's gonna turn and look at Fog, who hasn't like really said anything this entire time, you know. They've said all of one thing, which is to remind people about yeah. something that was said. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's just gonna be like, "You okay back there, big guy?" Fog will nod his head. Oh. Also, a bit of a saying in return. Remember, puppets have strings. Um, and she's gonna head into her room. And Eugene just kind of like bites his bottom lip, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> uh, but you know when, what? when Clamity says that, you can't help but think about Polly and Ramona, who are both marionettes. Yeah. Yeah, and all the people that I saw, and mm -hmm. like, there's there's a lot of juice building up I in Eugene right now. I do have to right also say, calamity does have strings. They don't go anywhere, yeah. but she does have strings. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No. No. Eugene put that together like after he saw the. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and and he he just like he, fog. He looks like he's gonna be sick to his stomach for like half a second. Cause like there's just so much bad juju. There's and he's a little paladin boy, and like to see this much like heresy and like no and like nighttime and non pelorness and like nah, he's just like I don't I don't I don't like it. I don't I don't like it. But then it like gets covered up with this veneer of like, gee, I'm really tired. Gee Willikers. You know. <laughs> he's like, cause I gotta keep up my dingle dangle, you know? And and uh, he ah! looks he looks back at Fog, and he's just like, uh, and, uh, are you, are you making fun of the way that I talk right now, Jask? I gotta keep up my dingle dangle. Yes, indeed. You know, <laughs> your dingle dangle, the thing that you're doing. Anyway, um, but, uh, but yeah, he turns back to Fog, and he's just like, you wanna maybe head up and get some sleep? Fog's gonna tilt his head and then shake it. Like, in a yes or a no? No. Um, what do you want to do? He licks your face, and then he nudges you up the stairs. You don't want to come with us? Oh, he's going to follow you. Okay. So, he's yeah, just, Eugene... He's essentially just pushing you into the room. Yeah, Eugene starts and then, like, goes up the stairs. If Fog, if fog follows him, he'll he'll keep on, you know... He'll yep. keep on going. Fog will follow. <laughs> All right. Okay. You guys get into your rooms unassaulted. Um, there's still the sugar ooze patrolling around the cottage, but again, you just wait for it to pass by and you're able to get in. The cottage itself is very cozy. It's it's like a comfortable, warm, like a a fireplace lit next to or during like a, a winter kind of warm um is there anything you guys wanted to discuss now that you're away from any posters yeah eugene like comes in and he's like all right several things i have to mention <laughs> all right may is like jeez and, yeah, yeah he like he like slams the door down. and he like he like gets Dad's a chair he like gets a chair he like walks the chair over and puts it under the knob of the door and then, like, is there, like, a, a table or anything? Yep, absolutely. And he grabs the table, and he's like, Gideon, help me with this! What are you doing? I'm barring the door! You don't... He can see through posters. If he wants something to get in, he will get in. There's no posters in here. That's what she said. Okay? That's and, not my no, point. Listen, I listen, already listen. saw there were no posters. No, would, Gideon no. would take off his mask and be like, if this Hecna wants to get into this cottage, I'm sure he has more than enough ways to get in. All right, okay. Your whatever. silly little chair All right. well, okay, and okay. table are not going to keep them out. Look, it's just for me, okay? We'll just do the chair and I'll be happy with it. All right? Well, I won't be happy with it, but I'll, I'll be complacent with it. So... I need to tell you guys several things. All right, one, that parade, they were all being puppeted. 
by strings, every single one of them, and they were crying, and they didn't want to be there, and, and Hecno looked at me with his weird face, and he made a weird face at me, and I didn't like it. You can't and, be friends with everyone, Eugene. No, look. How, yeah. can, how much I can identify with those puppets not wanting to be here? Hey, look, guys, I understand that we have a lot of mixed feelings about the Revolia, okay? All right? But the point I of the have matter, no mixed feelings. The point of the matter is that if the if 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 the Order of the Platinum Dawn saw what was going on here, they would lose their minds. All right, all right. Do, do you think the Order of the Platinum Dawn is going to be able to get here? No, no, they can't. Because I want to tell you guys something. Then they're okay? not going to lose their mind, no. Eugene. Get him, get him. I want to tell you something, and this is very important that I tell you this. I'm not actually a paladin, okay? But I know. But, no, but, I've always been able to sort of kind of feel something, right? I've always been able to sort of kind of feel something. Whenever I would say my prayers, whenever I would, you know, do anything at the church or, or the monastery or anything like that, I could always feel it, you know? And it's like, that moon, his gaze, he's stopping other gods' influence. At least Pelors, I know. This is not good. This place is not good. Could you have been feeling indigestion? He like, and this is the most serious Everybody. you've seen, you've seen Eugene ever, May. Like, normally he's just like, oh yeah, whatever. Like, you know, it, I this is May. I'm being, you know, you know I'm being kind of weird, but I'm not really, you know. He's fucking like super double dog serious right now. He goes, <laughs> May. I understand that humor is important to you, but right now, I'm going to need you to be serious. Because I feel that we may have gotten into something that's way over our heads. So over our heads that Miss Calamity can't even be with us. So not indigestion, got it? <laughs> no, not indigestion. Way bad than indigestion. Like spooky, spooky double indigestion. But with like ghosts yeah. and stuff. Eugene, I like to start. Have... I start going through breathing exercises. Um, with uh Eugene, I'm like, okay, we're gonna get through this. No, I'm fine. Okay, this is my job. <laughs> this is my job as but... a as a paladin, but not. You are not fine, Eugene. No, I'm fine. Look, listen. I have never felt more at purpose than right now. Okay. And what is your purpose? To do something. Great. I don't know. I don't know what I gotta do. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I gotta do it, okay? And frankly, I would really like it if you guys would be there with me. You know, the the ones of you that I know, the other ones. And he turns to uh, Olive and walks with Fog. If you guys don't wanna like be part of this, I understand, but. Something's gotta happen because this is this isn't right. Um, May turns back to Eugene. He's like, um, you. I mean, we're all here already. You know, we're gonna help you. We're your friends. And I like look at Gideon, and I'm like, we're his friends. Who's friends? <laughs> May is so frustrated. You're his friend, Gideon. No, I am here to watch you two because you went running off into the woods and I was afraid that you wouldn't come back alive. Uh, May rolls her eyes. She's like, fine, Gideon. You will watch us as we rescue people. You know you are not allowed to wander from the caravan on your own, May. You get into too much extra stuff. I have just turned back to Eugene, shaking my head. I'm like, I'm in. And Eugene kind of turns to Olive and walks with Fog, and they're just like, well, what do you guys think? Olive definitely looks a little unnerved. Like, she's used to weird, but not this level of weird. And she's definitely looking at Eugene specifically with a little bit of, like, worry in her eyes. Like, she's not even trying to hide it. 
Yeah, this boy is like heaving. Like he hasn't taken his armor off yeah. yet, and he's like been jostling about. And his symbol of Pelor, which is a golden sun with a ruby in the middle, has like the chain has like fallen off of his neck and is like dangling and clinking against his armor. Yeah, Olive is definitely uh, picked up on that, and I think yeah. when you turn to her and like ask her, uh, she's gonna get up. I imagine she was like sitting on the floor on like a table or. Yeah chair or something so you want to get up and kind of walk over to you and just kind of like how tall is eugene he is five six and a half okay so she looks down <laughs> at him yeah <laughs> and kind of just she she puts her hands like kind of on top of his head and a bunch of little tiny tiny little flowers kind of sprout around her head around her hands and just kind of weave through his hair a little bit and she looks at him and says, I'm with you. I don't like this place. I thought I did. But it's wrong. And he, he turns to the big guy. The muscle. <laughs> of the group. The dog. The big old dog. Uh... Fog with that uh, that weird like multi voice almost uh, way says nowhere to go. The only way is through. Sick. And Eugene nods. He's like, "Well, you've got plenty of people here, my friend." And okay. then Fog's gonna just lay down in front of the fire. With that, we're gonna shift scenes. Calamity. Ooh. Is there anything you do before trying to find some rest? I think, um, well, so she has a bit of a, like, night routine, but I think she'd probably, after she sort of entered the door, you know, did the whole, like, um, birthday party thing, so, you know, that's yep. the room she had. Um... A part of the whole thing. She sort of looks at the cake. She takes off the top half of her mask. Inhale. Looks at the poster. Because of course there's a poster. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then she'll go out. Um, and she'll just let... Um, what's the uh, marionette's name? Ramona. Ramona. Um, I don't know if Pinky would ever come in. But let, let her know if um, Pinky comes in for a room. Um, she can stay with Calamity. Uh, I, I'll, I'll make a note of that. I'll, I'll, I'll make a note of that right away. And she writes Thank it down. You. <laughs> um, and she'll head up. Sort of. Okay. Yeah. Um, roll me a d20 on a 11 or higher. Pinky actually shows up. Hey. Just a straight d20? Yep. Oh nope, no pinky tonight. That's okay. Uh, so yeah, no. After a while of waiting, just in case if her friend shows up, yep. She sort of sighs, looks at the poster. Thank you so much. Poster <laughs> winks at you. Um, and she will put back on the top half of her mask and sort of um, it's bunk beds, right? Yes. I think she sort of clambers up to the very top and sort there's of tries to stretch made up her there. wings. Unfortunately, um, the bindings that the uh, the cult put on you is a little too mm -hmm. tight. <sighs> well, it's almost like a roost. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll just sort of hug a pillow and go to bed. Okay. When you fall asleep, you dream of black, golden, red-colored spiders weaving a cocoon around you, hoisting it up, and bouncing it around as if it was a toy. Yeah. Yeah! <sighs> Eugene. Yeah. When you finally get to sleep, you dream of just being in empty darkness. You feel ground under you, and it feels, like, solid, like a, a single cut of smooth stone, but you can't see it. It's just darkness all the way around. There is no light. 
you can't even see your own body. You put your hand in front of your face and you can't see it. There is absolute no light. Gideon, you don't dream. Nope. You, uh, you're an undead. You just sit there. I just and... sit there and while they're sleeping, I just play my lyre and sing. Yep. Mayworth. Yes. You dream of delights all around. You dream the Revelia again. Um and it's even more fanciful in real life than your dreams could come up with. Um and you it ends with you uh taking a bite out of cotton candy and actually tasting the sweetness before you wake up. I just sigh contentedly and snuggle down deeper into whatever bed I'm in. Yep. <laughs> Olive. You dream of music and trees. You're running through a forest. You're being chased, but you're not sure by what. You hear laughter, but it comes from every direction and you feel lost. The trees are not normal, even for the Feywild. They're colored red, gold, and yellow. Or sorry, red, gold, and um, black. And walks through fog. You have your first dream. Woo! It's too cute. It's nonsense. You don't. You can't make out what any of it means. There's lots of colors and voices and talking and things, and uh, it's a lot to take in for your still brudgeoning mind to comprehend. You've only recently gained sentience, and uh, to have a dream influenced by an outer planar being, it's really confusing. But you think it's a good one. <laughs> that honestly sounds about right. That is where we're going to leave off for the session. Oh, man. Amazing. <laughs> uh, that was awesome. That was awesome. I will add one thing at the end there. If yeah. Olive woke up during, like, from... Because I'm taking it as it was a nightmare because it definitely did not feel good. <laughs> Yeah, um, um, it it definitely it sits in nightmare territory, but it's not like a, a crazy bad one. Yeah, it just it's unsettling mixed yeah. with all the feelings of like the day. But if at any point she like woke up during the night and heard Gideon playing his lyre, she would bring out her lute and kind of just gently like pluck a little bit and kind of match the tune, but very like subtly. Yeah. So she doesn't like overpower it, but just kind of adding a little bit to it. Yeah. Before she probably falls back asleep at some point. Yeah, we can say that at some point she woke up from that nightmare um, and did that to, to re-even herself out before going back yeah. to bed to, f to find the same dream awaiting her. Yeah, not great. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, guys. Oh, it, it was, was great. Oh, it was great. Yeah. I had a great yeah. time. I'm absolutely in love with every single one of your characters. Um... Yeah. Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns? Uh, I like Calamity more than I did originally. Now, <laughs> like, like I already like your characters, Beep. You know, you know mm -hmm. that. But like, but like after uh, after seeing like more of her personality, I'm just like, yeah, no, yeah, no. I I know how this is going to go already. I understand. <laughs> I understand this. And then like, like everyone everyone plays to their role exceptionally well. And and I feel like I feel like we all fill out sort of niches in the group that need to be felt out, and you know I I just think it's a it's a very solid core structure for a group, and I, I yeah I, I this dig is an it. absolute dream team. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love everybody here. Everybody's characters, just the way everyone's characters interact with one another. It's just awesome. Oh yeah. I don't know how many of you have played together before. But the uh, how the group interacts is amazing. Yeah. So the it's... fun thing is, is that like, so like Calamity and Eugene have played together before. Yeah. Mm. Olive and Walks Through Fog have played together before. We each other. And that's it. <laughs> wow. The way the group interacts with it seems like it's a group that's been together for a while. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have fallen into just such a good. Uh, dynamic so far and I'm really proud of y'all for opening up and being so like this 
All right. Well, if that's going to be it, um, I want to thank every single one of you for coming out. I want to thank you all for the follows. I want to thank my fellow adventurers and DM for being here. And um, be sure to... Well, there we go. Hold on. Uh, Be sure to... uh, Well, I can't say like, comment, and subscribe, but be sure to follow, Mm -hmm. to subscribe, and to come back every other Saturday and around this at around this same time for more shenaniganizing and more me trying to be a paladin, even though I'm not. Mm -hmm. Uh, Once again, if you would like to purchase any of the fine stuff that uh, Hit Point Press has, um, did you say Hecna was out yet or no? Uh, It is not out yet. It is not um, it is coming yet. soon, though. Okay. Hecna coming soon. Everything else on Hit Point Press, which is very good, um, if you want to look at any of it or if you consider buying any of it, um, please make sure to use that uh, web address up there. Uh, that will take you to my boy uh, Jest's uh, affiliate page for his uh, Hit Point Press affiliation. Um, I meant to say that a different way, but whatever. Yeah, thank you for posting it in the chat. I appreciate it. Um, yep. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't have anything more to say. This was fantastic. Um, yeah. And, you know. Oh, it, okay, so it pops up in the chat box if you do it like that. Sweet, cool, need to remember that. All right. Um, yeah, that, that's all I got to say. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the stream now. Everybody say bye-bye, I guess. Bye-bye. Unless, bye-bye. 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 <laughs> Unless you wanted to say something, Jask. No, that's all. All right, say bye again. Boy! Uh, <laughs> <laughs>